All right, guys, you voted for this video. Um, somebody brought this to my attention here. <laughs> Apparently, Deaf Noodles talked to Jamie Kennedy. I don't know if you guys know who he is. I'm a little older. Uh, it's on his podcast. Uh, he was uh, Malibu's Most Wanted. Interesting guy. I'm kind of curious about the video. Uh, just to be clear, I'm just curious. I'm not, like, hate-watching or anything. I'm curious about the conversation. You know, he's talking to somebody that, like, I grew up watching some movies of his. So it's like, oh, okay, got good for Deaf, you know? Maybe a resurgence in his career. I don't know. It sounded like he's talking to a comedian he might like. Uh, the comments, I looked, <laughs> I peeked at them. They're a little concerning, I guess. <laughs> um, so let's, but let's go. Or not. Maybe we won't go. Now we'll go. Dennis, I'm here today with Dennis, but really, I, I know so. him as... Deaf Noodles. The deafest of noodles. <laughs> Dennis, what's your last name? Feitosa. Feitosa, if you want to say it in Portuguese. Are you a Portuguesian? No, I'm Brazilian. Does it sound good? You are? Yeah, yeah. Where are you from? Sao Paulo. What? The audio's rough. What? Yeah. So I got to know you as I was watching you during the pandemic. Yeah, you really? You used to do a character. What? <laughs> That's interesting. Did he really? You know what's weird? I think I saw... Uh, what is her name? Sweeney? Christine Sweeney? Uh, you know who I'm talking about? She likes XQC. Isn't that so weird? Kristen Sweeney? You know, you guys will correct me. She likes XQC. It's so interesting. It's like worlds are colliding. Wow. Character with a cat. And it was yeah. a really sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you had cat ears. I did. And yeah. you had the crazy yeah. background that you put in. And you would just yeah. rant on everything. Pretty much, yeah. So how did that happen? Yeah, that was the irrelevant news segment. He should just go back to doing that, dude. Just without the cat ears, maybe. So it's funny because, like, that... Uh, I, I used to do, like... I know some people probably be like, oh, that wasn't a character that's him. I think that he's always done, like, a weird character that's, like, half, like, part him, but played up for what he thinks is, like, funny. He just got rid of the cat ears when he got, like, a lot of heat for getting his stories, like, very wrong. Um, and he's like, no, it was just a character. I'll get rid of the character. And then he was just the same, but without cat ears. <laughs> So, but yeah, okay. Sydney Sweeney. React Sweeney Todd. To style content on YouTube, meaning I would just like watch music videos that people would send me and like react to it. Yeah. And then at one okay. point, I got kind of sick of doing it like that. Yeah. Just so started reacting to like memes and more topical stuff. Yeah. And then, okay. um, and then, do you want me to wait? No. Okay. <laughs> and then, like, uh, just more stuff kept happening, uh, like on the internet. And I, I think it was around the time that uh, this YouTuber, uh, Onision, what the fuck is happening right now? Oh, I can't go this way. Actually, I'm going to die. Oh, no. He was going through, like, a huge scandal and, like, uh, what's the name of the guy from, like, uh, To Catch a Predator? The Chris Hansen? Uh, Chris Hansen. Chris. Um, oh, Hansen. Chris Hansen. Yeah, Chris Hansen was doing, like, a huge expose on him and shit. And this guy was, like, I ever still have not looked into anything about Onision. I don't know if I have it in me right now. We always, like, sometimes we talk about, like, a lot of loaded topics and it kind of burns me out. Every day uploading a video of himself, like, having a meltdown. So I started doing it, like, recovering it in a very, like, satirical way, just kind of. Uh, you know, kind of playing into whatever he was doing, just, you know, yes, sanding the shit out of it, right? Uh, like, oh, yeah, this guy's very normal. He's, you know, whatever dumb shit I would say. And then <clears throat> uh, people started liking it, and he his scandal, like, went away. Then there was this thing with Nikocado Avocado. I and, remember that. Yeah, and then it, it just, like, it was a few scandals in a row, but then it got to a point where, like, I just didn't have enough material, like, topical material to make an, an eight to ten minute video, which is how much time you need to monetize on you to be able to put mid rolls on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So sure. I started looking at news and I noticed that a lot of the news stuff that I was covering was just like dumb shit. Right. And I, uh, and I, I, yeah, I mean, you could still, that's the thing. Cause like, obviously like that's true. Eight minutes is probably like your best bet. Cause you get to put another ad on there. It doesn't guarantee that the ad's going to get played by the way. You can put every, an ad every five seconds. They'll only do so many ads based on like an algorithm that they have. Um, but like I say, it's like I feel like people overthink it sometimes. If you have content that you enjoy doing and it's like two minutes long, put it on YouTube. I mean, put it on TikTok. TikTok is like that's the thing is like no people don't really look at YouTube for short form content anymore. So if you're making like short form stuff, that's like I honestly would say like five minutes or under. Um, you really should be putting it on YouTube and tick, uh, excuse me, TikTok and YouTube should be like a secondary for it. Um, and then you're trying to capture the shorts audience. So you're probably going to want to put like the first 59 seconds of it as a short and then like link the short to the full video and tell people it's a full video, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because like the, the market shifted drastically. It's very difficult to, to, to blow that up now. But I feel like just do what you want to do because you'll enjoy it more and you'll be able to stick around with it longer and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there's going to be a market for it. 
you know, joy, uh, enjoying the content you're making is part of it. Like I enjoy the content we do. Sometimes we do some serious stuff and we talk about real stuff. And sometimes we just fart around and I enjoy farting around, you know, um, you just make sure you enjoy it. Cause if you're not enjoying your content, I mean, you're going to end up, you know, kind of having a little bit of an issue because you're not going to have the passion or motivation to keep it going. Parodied another new show, like, because I, you know, I wanted to f- format it in a specific way. So I parodied another new show on YouTube. I was making fun of it. It was, uh, it was drama alert. So I called it irrelevant mm-hmm. news. Right. Yes, that's what it was called. Irrelevant news. Yeah, wow, James. And it was uh, huge. I, I don't know if it was huge. I don't it know. was pretty big. It was sizable. I honestly think that then, like, dude, I don't like this guy, and I never will. But he could become successful again. Like, what Dennis is good at is he's good at like being kind of terminally online, being the first to like find a story and talk about it and pick it up and talk about it. Like at the very least, this guy should like seriously. I don't know, like he should either go back to doing his show or find somebody that could be the front man for a show and go 50-50 on like an irrelevant news again with somebody that's like more entertaining to be able to present the news story. Uh, and it would become very successful. Like he just has to commit to it. Figure out how to use TikTok the right way. The guy'd kill it. Honestly. I saw it all the time. I feel like I watched it every day during the pandemic. Really? A yeah. lot of, I feel like a lot of people, yeah. I, I mean, I, I had a good viewership for a while, yeah. Uh, Why did you change the format? Uh, so it was several different things. Uh, I really, (laughs) you know, I wonder why he did part of him had to have been like kind of over it. He was probably over the negative attention that he would get when he would sometimes get some stuff wrong. And by the way, it's going to happen, especially when you're doing something like he's doing where it's like the, the, the the first thing to come out, it's going to happen. Um, if he had had like a sunny V2 perspective on it and just didn't care about the backlash, he probably would have been exponentially better off ignoring it. And it would have went away in like a, a less than a week. Um, but he's like, he, he seems a little too sensitive to the criticism. So I think part of it, and this is, you know, me, me too. Like I reset a year and a half ago because I was getting a lot of like criticism and it's always disproportionate, even when there's like reasonable criticism to be had. And like I was burning out and I needed to like reset just to have a smaller platform again, just to take a break. And, uh, you know, I've been able to rebuild. I, I, you know, sometimes you just need that mental break. And I've been able to rebuild, I think, reasonably successfully. I'm pretty close, if not at where, what the fuck, dude? Are you kidding me? Where, where I was before. And that was probably part of what he was doing, you know, is just kind of rebuilding. And I think that was a bigger thing. But, like, I think it's time to try to, like, get back to into it. Especially now. I think that YouTube and TikTok are um, less, there's less of a culture going on there's less of a personalized culture going on i truly believe that i don't know exactly why maybe because there's more short form content or there's more content creators or maybe there's more like niches of content i don't 100 percent know why but i feel like that's true and it's like you can probably come back and not really have to worry about like too much toxicity you know start small come back and feel it out you know really enjoyed doing that format for a, a while right i think i did it like about two maybe two and a half years uh, and I, I love doing it, but then it just started getting stressful and yeah. like not fun. And <laughs> at the same time, like people started considering me like a newsman, right? What's wrong with that? <laughs> well, you kind of were. Yeah. Well, the problem with that is that like, there's a responsibility onto you and like, you're going to get criticism when you make mistakes. You know what I mean? That's his really his biggest problem is that he, he gave people the feedback that he will, that he will listen to what you have to say. Uh, like you know what i mean like if he he should just have not cared or watched any of it and nothing no it wouldn't have mattered like if he never responded to me in the first place when i like criticized him for his uh the b family coverage which i was right about nobody would it would have moved on it wouldn't have mattered him responding is what gave me like i talked about him once and that was i was i wasn't going to keep talking about it but then like after that it spiraled into a thing and had a significantly negative impact on his career but if he had just ignored it he would have been doing fine i don't think he dislikes the content he used to make like I think he disliked the negative attention, and it's like if you get if you go back into it and you just kind of learn how to deal with it, you're gonna be fine. Like in all honesty, you'd be fine. Well, I'm not a newsman. <laughs> you were. I mean, yeah, people were getting like the the dumbest news from me, but I was like, honestly, yeah, you like, were like some form of a reporter just for like dumb shit. Like the my favorite parts of like doing that was being able to tell a random like you know dick joke in the middle of like something serious. <laughs> you know, you would say the most crazy news, and then you would, at the end you'd put two cats, and that's why I heard. <laughs> I don't think anybody watched it for the jokes, Dennis, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I do a palate cleanser. Palate cleanser. Yeah. And now a palate cleanser. Yeah. So wait, what happened? Why did you do ears? Why did you wear ears? 
So the story be, to be relatable to the youngsters, I really have no idea. This guy's like almost forty. I have no idea what the whole ear thing was about. <laughs> but found that was uh, I used to do when I was doing the reaction videos, like as it was transitioning into this, like covering news type stuff. I had uh, what? what the fuck? Why does he keep getting up? I had I had to wear headphones because I had to you know hear what the video that was in front of me was playing. So you chose cat boy earphones. So. Uh, but I had these cheap fucking little headphones or like $10 headphones from Amazon mm -hmm. and they broke one day and the only pair of headphones that I had were these, uh, you know, cat ear headphones that belong to my now ex-girlfriend that were there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she, <laughs> she, so she, Why was that so funny? You know? She, she wasn't there. She was like, it, it was the beginning of COVID. So she had gotten stuck in New York. Uh, but so I started wearing her headphones and people right. liked it. They were like, oh my God, you sound, and I did this like Gilbert Gottfried voice. Yeah. Like, do the voice. If you can. What, what, what voice? <laughs> <What's> the, <laughs> what voice? I don't understand. I know that's one of the things you told me off air that yeah. it got tiring because it was hard to do the voice. Yeah, the voice like every day afterwards, like I, I lose my voice. He said he didn't do the cat ears anymore because he hated it and made him very nervous. No, the reason he he didn't do it is because he made up this whole thing where it's all just a, the cat is a character and he's like everything is satirical in his news coverage, even though like it wasn't. Like he would probably insert what he thought was funny into it, but he would report it like the, the irrelevant news in like a more serious capacity. And so he had to, to get rid of that because that was somehow like getting rid of the character. But even though he was the same person just without the ears, <laughs> he's like a weird guy. So much screaming. So much. Yeah. Rrr, yeah. All the time. Uh, so you wore her headphones. I wore her headphones and people liked it. Okay. So I started like kind of. Uh, you know, adopting like different things that they liked and building this whole like, you know, I wore glasses with no, with no lenses. It was just the frames. And yeah. the I, like the yeah. idea was like I wanted to portray like this character, this cat character as this like pseudo intellectual, you know, and like, they, you know, in Homer, like in The Simpsons. I don't think any of this is true, by the way. <laughs> find the glasses in the toilet and all of a sudden everybody thinks he's like a genius. Yeah. So that <laughs> that's like that's so funny. So you were doing that. Yeah. I honestly don't believe any of this. I just think this is like a weird like new story about it. But OK. Whatever. And then there was a whole like the UCLA sweater I wore like UCLA. A lot yeah, of you UCLA really like you repped UCLA hard. Yeah, yeah, because it was like supposed to be this like uh, this newly college educated, uh, you know, uh, uh, cat or perspective, right? So that's so funny. Or maybe he just had the sweater. Right, okay. See yeah. the level of trolling that he did. Do you, you think that's like <laughs> well because you were basically commenting on college fucking education yes. and like how smart they think they are yeah. in UCLA and his cat. <laughs> I don't believe any of this. You think that this guy was actually making a commentary on like college people and how like how they thought that they were intelligent? Like that's obviously not true because Dennis and again back then and that's fine. Like I'm but like he was very much like he was he was pearl clutching like whatever the uh the the the, the narrative was like whatever the uh, acceptable narrative was like that was the whole crux of the issue with the B family thing is he took that story on without question despite the fact that it's very clear that they were like sensationalizing that story and lying about different things so that's not true he wasn't putting on like this uh, mocking character it's so interesting like he uh, it's interesting because it sounds to me like he spent a lot of time reframing his old character to like justify it instead of just like considering the ways in which he was bad as a content creator and the same way i did the same thing that's why i did a reset like hot take like that's why i did the reset guys because like, i don't think i was being as good of a content creator as i wanted to be that was making like i was uh, like I was making more mistakes. Uh, I wasn't happy with my attitude. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's obviously bad to be bad, but there's nothing wrong with being a little introspective. But it sounds like he spent most of his time just trying to figure out like what's the what's the narrative I could push, just in case. Uh, I, but uh, maybe I'm fucking wrong. I don't know. Ad has all the answers. <laughs> yeah, it's really fucking funny. And also commenting and trolling on like the new culture of like you know these young influencers who now have opinions, and if they get views, it must be right. Yeah. That is it. Okay. And uh, also, like, that, I mean, there's an aspect, like, I uh, the whole perspective of the show was a little more, like, left-leaning than I'm actually, than I actually am. I'm, like, more in the middle. Yeah. You know? You're a reasonable person. Yeah. That's, I like to lead by reason than, like, affiliation to party great reset. politics, you know? Yeah. So, uh, that's, uh, that was one of the well, things also. make you look very good to admit that, like, you had a show where you were substantially more left-leaning. <laughs> When you don't actually have those viewpoints, I mean, it kind of makes you seem like a not good narrator of like any story. It makes you see. It sounds like what you're saying is you were legitimately grifting, and you want to know what if he was and he admitted it. I think that that's a respectable thing to do. If he was like, you know what, like I wanted to maintain my popularity, so like I would, and I was afraid to 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 not agree with like the public narrative. I'd be like, okay, I respect that. I respect you saying that because there's probably times where I did the same thing. 
without even like realizing it. Because sometimes it can be like that. Sometimes like it can be scary. I don't do that anymore, you know. But it can be scary to be like, oh man, if I say this, people might like fucking hate me. Uh, but then I realized that like you, <laughs> the people are gonna hate you, but you could always recover. So, um, but I would respect that if he had said that. Like, yeah. So, so that like it got it ended up getting so like, I guess. Uh, uh, like adopted by a certain side of the political spectrum, that being like the a lot of left uh, stuff that like it just it, it didn't represent me anymore. It felt like it was so far beyond like my own perspective, mm. you know. So mm-hmm. I, uh, you know, I I, I kind of needed the the like the break off from that to l- recalibrate myself and to be my authentic. Well, I don't self. think that's why you had the blow up. Like you got fucking dumpstered for being an asshole to me, but <laughs> but hey, listen, kind of based being an asshole to Papa God, my right? Self on my own social media because that's one of the things that like. Having the the satirical or the parody be like what people think you are in real life, yeah, and that not be an accurate representation of you. Like that's what like that's why when I stopped doing it, a lot of people, oh, his mask fell off. No, bro, this was a character. I stopped doing the character, and this is the me. You know what I mean? Did yeah. people say his mask fell off? Oh no, they might have said that when he started like uh, mocking me for crying. <laughs> Which, by the way, you know, I don't want to get into why I was, but uh, like, uh, you know, I wish I wasn't, uh, didn't get all worked up. I guess you can watch that Sunny V2 video. I'll put it in the description if you, well, I'm not going to explain the situation. Like, it's a personal situation. So, oh, well, how old are you? I'm 39 now. I just turned 39 yeah. a day ago. Happy There's, post, buddy. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. Brazilian don't, don't crack. Brazilian, <laughs> Brazilian is resilient. <laughs> Very funny, actually. I was thinking of a one. <laughs> dude, you look good. Thank you, bro. You got I, all your hair? I got it. Yes. <laughs> I got all my hair. <laughs> my dog. I missed the meme in the chat where people would talk about Myron having uh, fake hair. Uh, wow, thirty nine. I thought you were like twenty seven. Yeah, my dad yeah, is. Somebody else did too when he told him. Uh, like seventy three, and he doesn't look a day past fifty. Wow, wow. And he's a big kid. I, people always think they're like Jamie. You're so much taller in person. Yeah. Because I'm around big actors. Like, there's not many big actors, but I've worked with the most big actors. You know, Jerry O'Connell, Matt Lillard. Yeah. And so you're you're a big. Dude. People don't realize how big you are. Yeah. You're like, almost six five. Yeah, I'm six four, two fifteen. Yeah, you're you're a big oh, guy. Yeah. So Good. hold on. So you go. Where did you where 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 did you grow up? I grew up in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. And when you come here, when you come here, right? So I was doing Cubans. That's racist. You yeah, I remember when he lied and said he was ten years younger. Yeah, I still don't understand why he did that. Maybe to seem more relatable. But why? I was talking like fucking Tony Montana. <laughs> Tony Montana. Why? Why are you come here? <laughs> See, <a> Cuban. <laughs> you're from Brazil, and I'm yeah. like, you're like, I grew up in Sao Paulo. I go, so. Okay. <laughs> Okay. That's a cocaine. Okay. <laughs> but like, see, if you're white, anyone is fucking from South America, we just think you're Mexican. Yeah. Racist. No, that, look, uh, the, the only thing that people get wrong, a lot of people like know a lot of stuff about Brazil. The only thing they get wrong is that they, Brazil. Think, they think we speak Spanish. That's the one thing. Uh, no, they, what they don't know is Defi speaks Portuguese and that's an Portuguese. offshoot. It's very different. It's like a sister language. Yeah. yeah. I've been down that area. So. You've been to Brazil? No. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I've been to. Um, hey, hey, Uncle Tick said happy birthday to me on Instagram. Very cool, man. My wife likes him. That's why he said that. That's why she she brought it up, Uncle Tex. Yeah, we're front we're, we're mutuals. Yeah, this guy he's pretty cool. My wife likes him a lot. He's cool, you know. Irisau. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've been around there, but I yeah. haven't been to Brazil, which I've been meaning to go. Yeah. Um, but that's, well, it's, I, uh, I know it's Portuguese. I just been to Mexico like a couple of weeks ago, and honestly, it's pretty much the same, just different language. You can get by there, right? You uh, you habla español? I un poquito, sí, sí. Pero no es mucho bueno, dude. Uh, really? <laughs> mucho thought, bueno, bro. They were kind of similar. They're very similar, but a lot of the language, a lot of the languages, like. Different. You can get it's enough to get by. So I want a ham sandwich. Say that in Portuguese. Eu quero um sanduíche de. Uh, como é, como é que é? I forgot what ham is in Portuguese. I, I've been speaking English for so long. I, like I forgot. Dude, I literally thought you were from Burma. Just say ham, dude. Do like the Spanglish, but Portuguese. I don't know how you would mix those two. You know. I thought I was from Burma. <laughs> and you're white. You're kind of white. white. You have a white tone. I do. I have a very white tone. Yeah. If you, br- <laughs> what does a white tone mean? Do you mean like he's, he's his accent is like very American? <laughs> what? You, if you put you in the sun, you bake. Yeah, no, I I, I get. Oh, his skin tone. I don't know why the fuck I thought he was referring to his language. Like, yeah, he's white skinned. Yeah, you can be white and be from like Mexico and shit, or Portugal, or wherever the fuck he's from. Brazil. He said it like three times. My bad. Okay, wait. So where, when did you come to L.A.? So I came to L.A. like six. You're fucking uh, famous content. But didn't, didn't he live in New York like first or something? Seven what, years ago. Somebody else. When you were thirty-two or thirty. Thirty-two, thirty-three. Yeah, it was post-divorce. You were married? Divorced. I was married, yeah, for like Damn, a- we're getting the fucking inside scoop. This guy was legit married? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Where did you live? Port- Port- I lived San in... Paolo? No, so like, I lived in New York primarily when I was married, so... When did you come to America? Damn, I know too much about this guy. So, uh, it's a complicated story. All right. uh, you want to hear I all of it? dad's like rich and he just wanted to. <laughs> That's what I think really happened, but let's see. But, I mean, if it's interesting. I think it's interesting. I don't know if they're going to... Or you're going to think it's interesting. Go for it. All right, so... Uh, I was actually born here. 
In LA. No, no, no. In New Jersey. Oh shit, he's got the Hassan Piker, dude. Hassan Piker was actually born in New Jersey. I think it, I think it legitimately was New Jersey. I think he was like legitimately born inside of New Jersey. Um <laughs> his parents had him born here and then they brought him back to uh they brought him back to Turkey. And uh, this way he'd have dual citizenship. New Jersey, okay. So the way that happened was both my parents are Brazilian, right? Okay. Had never been to America before. Okay. My dad was working as an accountant in Brazil and his company had these like annual lotteries that somebody would like win the chance to come to America to finish their CPA degree. Right. And oh, my, cool. so my dad had been like for eight or nine years, been trying to come out here to finish his CPA degree, get the accounting lottery. Shoot, it takes me a long time too, but not eight or nine years to come. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay. So, and they would cover all of it. They cover your moving costs. They cover the, the whole, I think it's like a nine or 10 month program for him mm-hmm. to do it. And he got to do it at NYU. Right. Um, so, uh, he met my mom, like six months before. Weird story. The business had like a, they had a, they, they had like a, whatever, like a prize of going to America to finish your degree. Okay. Before he won that. So she was pregnant with me when he ended up getting selected to win. And then I remember it was like my grandfather, they weren't married yet when she got pregnant. My grandfather apparently was like, you guys have to get married before you leave. Yeah. Because you know, he was terrified of my dad, like abandoning my mom in America. Yeah. You know, so they got married and then like less than a month later, they moved up here and I was born here. And then, like six months later, moved back to Brazil. So he's got he's Hassan Pikering. He's just like Hassan Piker, dude. That's fucking crazy. Was like, I have a passport. I'm literally a baby. Like my dad holding me up. That's good. You have dual. I have triple. What's the third? Italian from my mom's side. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's Which why. will get you in the EU countries. Anyway, yeah, anywhere in the EU. So you're really you got a really passport, bro. Yeah, I, I'm like actually kind of CIA, but I can't really talk about it. I wouldn't oh, be surprised. <laughs> and it's infiltrating the comedy circuit. Yeah. <laughs> It is. So hold on. So you, Brazil, boom, back, born here, then go back to Brazil. How long did you live there for? So I lived there until I was like 12. And then I got sent to boarding school for a year. Like I was, I was swimming. Uh, I was like a swimmer. I was trying mm-hmm. to be like an Olympic swimmer. Okay. Uh, so Damn. the man of many talents over here, fucking Olympic swimmer. Oh, fascinating life. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Living it, living it felt not fascinating, but I guess that's how it is for most people. So you, you know? were, you swim, you went to boarding school and then what? So I went to boarding school after like a year, year and a half. I came back to Brazil, finished out high school and, uh, and did like three years of college in Brazil. And then I transferred my college to Florida, to the University of North Florida in Jacksonville. Didn't this guy say he went to the same schools like Vince Vaughn for comedy? And that's why I finished. UNF? Up. UNF, yeah. I don't even, dude, I've done every college. What's the, um... Or is that like a weird lie? Um... Lake what the I don't the I O theater like where did he go to acting school the it sounds the I O theater like what is he talking about college in Florida you've done UNF oh, he's no. definitely fucking rich dude oh, no I've done UCF UCF I've done yeah. FSU I've done UCF FSU. I lived on them all I've never heard of UNF you it's in Jacksonville wow it's in uh, uh University of North Florida North Florida yeah wow they when I was there I think the only like I don't think they have that many comedians come through I think the only one they had was like they I think they had like one Bill Burr show wow so and it wasn't you brother <laughs> I and I think that. Honestly, I I don't remember specifically how it went, but I I don't I don't like the students down there aren't like necessarily woke, but they're just like really country. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So so you go down there, you go to Florida for a year, and then what happens? And then after I finish college, I graduate with like a dual major uh, in English and communications with like a concentration in advertising. Okay. Then I, I moved to New York like the day after. I pack my stuff in a U-Haul, drive up to New York. To do Jesus Christ, what the fuck? This guy must have like a ton of money. What the fuck? What? Uh, to be an actor. I'd gotten into a couple different acting programs. Oh, so you're an actor. Yeah, I, my training is as an actor, yeah. I did. I grew up doing theater, oh, doing... Commu- my training is in game and, web, game and web design. Actually has come in handy doing a little bit of video editing for myself. Um, but that's about it. Community theater, like, first time I was, like, scouted. I don't even know if that is what it is. I was, like, in a mall with my brother. It's, like, such a fucking weird, like, cliche, stereotypical oh, story. But I was in a mall with my brother. We were, like, you. fighting. And my mom was, like, literally holding us apart. Because we would get into these fucking crazy fist fights. Hold me back, mom. Hold me back. Just yell. I didn't even know this guy had a fucking brother. What the hell? Find out new Def Noodles lore every fucking day. Isn't that crazy? at each other in the middle of like public it's Brazilian blood I guess yeah. yeah so my mom was like holding us apart and this woman just walks up to her she's like you kids got spunk like she said it in Portuguese right <laughs> <laughs> and, and- and then, and then she like gave my mom a card. She was like, she wanted us to start auditioning for commercials. Yeah, and that's what I. You guys were fighting, and <laughs> what? This is a weird. So wait, hold on. The story is you guys were fighting in the store as kids, and then a guy's like, "Your kids got spunk. Let's what them audition." <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, maybe. Hey, like that's how weird I started story. like actually working in the business, like in Brazil, auditioning for commercials, and then I did a lot of voiceover work for stuff. 
or what dude so as a kid yeah so don't you do like sp- what like what's one thing he did stand up i do stand up yeah but didn't you do it because i you how long have you been doing it so i i started doing stand up like 2016 2017 in new york did, did a couple years and then uh i mean this last since i opened the club now it's gonna be about like another two years on top of that but i never saw <laughs> like, you listen, on- stand up's hard i would never do it myself i'm not a comedian but you've been doing it for so long man like you're just really still doing it huh that's god bless you man God bless you. He's got perseverance. So I'll give him that. In the circuit. What do you mean on the circuit? In L.A. In L.A.? There's a circuit. I only did like flappers, really. Yeah, you never came to the... I, I didn't go to flappers enough. I love flappers, but I didn't yeah. see you at the... Has, uh, have you seen his stand-up, Jamie? Aha, uh-huh. I never saw you at the improv. Yeah, I yeah. never saw you at pop-up shows. No, I, I would just... So honestly, you just do flappers. You who room? I, no, I did the main room a bunch of times. Your I, show or be part of a show? No, I was part of a show. I did like two shows with Jeremy Piven. Yeah. I got bumped by him twice. Like, was, yeah. Because, you know, he's Jeremy Piven. I'm a fucking nobody. Uh, We're all somebody in God's eyes. Yeah, it, yes. So you do, you were doing you got bumped okay so that the first time I got bumped by him was funny though because I didn't know what the fuck because he crushed oh, he's guy. like telling all these stories okay. yeah. about like uh, <laughs> fuck what's the guy from Full House like uh, Dave Bob Saget cool guy no no the other guy the good looking guy John Stamos John, yeah oh. he's telling all these like hilarious stories with John Stamos and shit and like all these celebrities and it's crushing because mm-hmm. it's like people love that shit right they love hearing oh so, you know and I go up there and I'm like this Joe Schmo like you know <laughs> I'm talking about being broke and yeah. you know <laughs> what talking about being broke what are you it sounds like you're lying. <laughs> What a weird thing to pretend to have an experience of being broke when you like your whole life is like, yeah, you know, um, I have like tried citizenship and I just kind of moved from Florida to New York to there to California to this. Like, I don't think you were ever broke, man. There's no fucking way. Nobody would ever say these things. Uh, my girlfriend's dirty car and like all this shit, but I did well. But it was it was just like intimidating to see him do like like fit- maybe he was low on funds. I wouldn't doubt that. But that's not the same thing to me as being broke. Like being broke is like a real like you have no money, no opportunity, no nothing. You're kind of just fucked, right? That's a little bit different than like yeah, I didn't really have money at the time. It's a bit of a difference to me at least. Fifteen minutes and just crush the whole time and leave the energy like all the way up there. And I'm like, it was the first time ever in my life that I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna follow this shit, right? And I have to do eight minutes. Mm-hmm. So I went up there, just did my material, like you know, kind of roasted myself a bit at the top, like oh, you know, uh, you guys, the celebrity walked out, now you guys got a dude who's got a mop on his head or something. Always you know? good to do that. And then how did you do? I did pretty good. Yes. Yeah. Listen, it's all part of the passage. It's a rite of passage. Yeah. It's a great way to learn. Yeah. The good news is, That's fair. imagine if it were like you were famous and then you had to follow someone. Uh, I'm not gonna name names, but I had to follow very big, huge killers the other night, two different times in the same night. And yeah. I was like, I'm just gonna do it. I mean, I've done it in my life, but. And, you know, I've been doing it a long time, so it went yeah. well, but it, I've done it and it sucks. But at least when you're anonymous, which yeah. you're not anymore to me, but maybe some people don't know you as much as him, it's a less pressure. Yeah. But when you become, you know, known and then you do it, they say, oh, Dennis didn't have the set. Or what. But you, already, yeah, yeah. you had a good set. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. There's going to be more, uh, you know, yeah, broke before. It's going to be more pushback because you're like a whole person. Yeah, I think I saw, I think it might have been Jamie Kennedy where like he was performing at a show and he got so drunk that like he they had a they had actually had to refund people. I think it was him. But what people didn't know, and this is something I learned, was that apparently it was a show where like the air pressure is so high or something. Um, it's like so high up that like two beers will get will knock anybody on their ass. And so like he just didn't realize he didn't have enough time to adjust to it. Pretty sure that's what it was, which is crazy. So interesting. Yeah, I had a good say. Yeah, it was good. It's all part of it. You know what I mean? It's like, listen, it's just fucking shooting hoops. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's literally like there's gonna. Cause I was thinking about it, sometimes like a show might be off for me, and, I, and it, it sucks because they pay money and it's so much pressure. Yeah. But what do you do when your favorite player has a bad game? Yeah. You don't get the money back. So it's like that. That's what comedy is. And you ever have like those things that maybe in your head, like you're like, oh, I didn't go as well as I expected. And then you watch the <clears> tape <throat> the next day and you're like, oh, actually, it, yeah. I, did, I did work out pretty well over there. That's good because you yeah. might have something called bomb years. Yeah. And bomb years is, uh, as Whitney Cummings told me that phrase, and kill years. And comics who have kill years are usually delusional. Like, oh, I killed. I killed. But they didn't do as well and they're yeah. overcompensating. I bomb- don't know, man. I think he might have uh, kill years. <laughs> Like he might, uh, I, he might, whatever that is, or where, where he thinks he did better than he did, because there's no fucking way. I'm just, I'm just saying, dude. Bomb years are people that always do well or kill, and they go, I don't know if they did good. Yeah. So it sounds like you tend to go to bomb years, which is good because it keeps you humble, working harder. Oh yeah. That's know. uh, I mean the the whole the whole practice of of stand up like it's just constantly humbling him. That yeah. thousand percent. Uh, that's that's definitely true. Like every time you get up on stage, you can have. I mean, there's that. We, I was just talking to uh, somebody who. Uh, it's a good friend who's uh, a host of the club, uh, Doug Fager. He's mm-hmm. like a comedy store guy. I wrote, Sir, she has, did you say a slur to us? This battle guy. And he was, we, we were talking about how you have a great set and then you have the worst set you've ever had. You know, it's like a great set's followed by your worst set. Dude, it's, it is. It's hard. What's like an example of like his great set? Because if you do multiple things, like, <sighs> I was saying this the other day. I was talking to somebody who's really young in the game and he's like, I couldn't go up in front of certain people because I didn't want to look bad. And yeah. I'm like telling this guy, then you're not going to be a comic, dude. And because 
unfortunately, everything is everywhere now. So yeah. there is no more image. So if you're just an actor and it was the 1980s and you had to keep your image, yeah, then it was like, this is your image and every time you show up is perfect and then they hide the coke in the back and all that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but when you're a comedian and you want to have an image, that's that's like, okay, you'll work out private in little clubs until you present the final set, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the greatest specials you've ever seen, you can hear about the workout sets, yeah. right? Before they went up. But now with social media, everybody's everywhere and they're going to just get you. So it's mm -hmm. like, you're going to see warts. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. That makes sense. That definitely makes sense. And the thing is, if I mean, I guess at the very least you can use, I mean, I guess it's gotta be hard to use social media because you can't get instantaneous feedback. I mean, you gotta do like a lot of crowd work, but I think Shane, I think, I think Shane Gillis did a lot of uh crowd. Like he did, he would do like smaller shows and put them up on YouTube. Right. It's not a bad idea. You know, there's pros and cons to it. People are worried about looking bad. You can never do comedy. Yeah. It is a super humbling experience. Yeah. And I, I kind of, I don't know because I'm, I'm I only know of this era. I don't know how it was before where you could actually hide all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know. But I I kind of appreciate how just raw it is now because I mean, uh, I think that being able to fail fa and fail gracefully and be confident that even though you failed, that you you're gonna do well, you know. Again, I think it's a good thing for people to know because like I feel like society in general is just so obsessed with like the W, right? Everybody wants to be winning all the fucking time. Like Andrew Tate says, I've never had a loss in my fucking life. No, bro, you've had numerous. You know, mm -hmm. you can't. I guess I think now. I mean, I, I guess nowadays people it's a it's a very common meme on like tiktok it sounds like silly but where people are like oh my god like this person's fall off needs to be studied <laughs> right <laughs> which is weird because the only time they put that is on my videos or when my videos have like five hundred thousand views i'm like well i don't understand like why you're talking about my fall off on this video it's like a half a million views but um and it's so interesting i i don't at least i don't remember that back when i was blown, although blown up but although i wasn't falling off at that point well i'm really not falling off now but now i'm just on a tangent there are a lot of people will make public commentary about how like you suck and so, like, it's an interesting thing to deal with, I'll say. Um, so, like, that could be discouraging, I suppose. But when you get to a certain point, you realize, like, it never really mattered. And it doesn't really matter at all. And you kind of just kind of work through it. And you just realize, like, oh, like, you know, if anything, those things just, like, upset you. But after you get over them, they don't really have any impact on you anymore. You know? And, like, just cosmetically present your life like an Instagram post. You know? Like, it's oh, not I reality. And I think it's just, it's it's way more inspiring for people and it's way more uh, relatable if you show the warts, you know? Vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, actually, well, that's what also comedy important. is. It's like, comedy is showing your most, you know, I always say if you're a good comic, you're vulnerable. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can Because an audience just don't feel like they have it all figured out. Yep. So you got to be the captain of the ship, but then if you show a little bit in your uh, armor, then they're like, oh my God, they even relate to you more. Yeah. So let me ask you a couple of questions. I hate to go, but yeah, you yeah. now do, I'm curious about your clips. Yeah. Because you just start a clip and you're looking at something and then you'll rant and then they'll just cut off in the middle. Why do you do that? <laughs> It makes me mad. You, you gotta leave I love the cat. The cat always <laughs> fucking at the beginning, the middle, and the end. The cat finished. Now you're like, well, this is what happens, right, when you're cleaning a toilet bowl. And you think you're going to have these type of cleaners? Well, that, and then cut. <laughs> we got to leave like, more. Wanting more is not a thought. You cut mid thought. What is, why, first of all, I don't know why Dan's laughing so much. But like, I don't, what is it that he's referring to, specifically the clips he's referring to? And I get so fucking angry. And I'm like, what happened to nudes? Uh, yeah, is I that mean, a new angle you're doing? Uh, it's So I'm going more with like, Commentary. I'm not trying to be like a news person. I'm just trying to kind of no, your reaction video. Yeah, reaction. Com yeah, sure. Commentary. commentary on stuff, and I try to squeeze as much as I can into a minute, uh, and, and try to. They always have to be a minute because the real. Just about that. Like they can't really be much longer. Honestly, most people watch between seven and fifteen seconds. Mm -hmm. So anything that's like thirty to forty, you're already like borderline. Like yeah. you know, that's just not the way to go. I I don't know what is. Uh, this doesn't even make sense. <sighs> I mean, what a lot of it matters. I haven't really seen this. Con like, what is he referring to? Is he referring to? TikToks specifically? Like, what is is it? Is this what he's referring to? Hi, this is Dylan Mulvaney, the artist behind the song Days of Christmas. It was like, why was Dr. Disrespect banned? Ah! <laughs> it is fing okay? I'm not gonna apologize. Say that it isn't that I'm not admitted to not asking. So you wanna make it her sub -catic experience? I yeah, I mean, I feel like, why wouldn't you hit the minute mark at least when, I when you're doing these? Why are you doing 54 seconds? <laughs> why wouldn't you hit the minute mark on this? That's what monetizes. I don't understand. Whatever. I don't know why I care. Okay. So we're literally going to have no attention span in two years. Basically. Yeah. Just I mean, TikTok is, is a little bit more uh, pushing the longer form content. That's like a minute and over. So I don't know. Uh, but I guess at least he's putting up more content. I just don't see why you wouldn't want to monetize it I mean, especially since it sounds like he's playing with the first half of his video as someone else's video and then after is his commentary which <laughs> funny enough um i don't even know if that would be able to get monetized probably would 
it's just funny enough. It's like, okay, if they get 30 seconds into their minute long video because they're watching someone else's thing and they're like, all right, I want to turn it off once he starts his commentary. <laughs> I don't know if they would do that though. Who the fuck knows? We plugged into a but, fucking uh, Apple Vision Pro, just feeding us everything we need to know. 100%. Like, we, and th that's the thing too. We're not going to know shit. 100%. It's just going to be like, sure. uh, I can't remember. Any, like, I was just now like, what the fuck's the name of that guy from that show? Like, I can't remember anything. It, I'm just saying, it's Wally. Yeah. Between all the information we're getting and COVID, how many times have you had COVID? Uh, never. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, the, like the information that we're getting, the attention span is decreasing. That's why if you watch Papa Guy content, that's hours long. Your attention span is going to go up. I mean, I'm playing a fucking video game while we're doing this because my attention span is so fucking low, I guess. But Wow. Never. Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> Who was it? The guy, the guy, the superstar from Brazil. Oh, Neymar? Yeah, Neymar. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it's easy to not get COVID when like you don't have to necessarily like work. Like I was doing content. I didn't get COVID when I was like legitimately working. And then I got it afterwards because like my mother-in-law works. My wife had to go to work. Like, you know, her husband had to go to work. Not, not my wife's husband. <laughs> my mother-in-law's husband. You know, we got COVID that way. Uh, but when you're able to isolate better because you're doing like online work, it makes it a lot easier. But it's interesting because I didn't get it while I was like working in it. I got it once the motherfucker brought it home. Then again, he did uh, hospital work. So I had COVID. Probably not. See, no. this guy, that's incredible. Yeah, my mom's had it five times though. Damn. God bless her. She's yeah, strong yeah. as hell. I've had it three times. Yeah. But each time my brain is like, yeah. So yeah. you don't so yours is just from five G towers. What? Your brain is gone. My brain? Yeah. Oh, my brain's my brain gone. Is, my brain's gone because of information and COVID. Yeah. So yours, but you never had COVID, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still feel the brain fog? Not as much, but like I literally was like thinking about something the other day and I was like, you know that place, that place. I feel like I have brain fog too sometimes, but it's because I don't really sleep as much and I eat poorly. I think that's <laughs> a much more of a serious contributing factor to it. That place, uh, uh, the Mexican food, Mexican, and, and it was like, it took me like a minute and I go, Del Taco. I mean, maybe, I don't know if this guy's dr doing like drugs or anything. That might be more of what it is. I don't know. Like Del Taco. <laughs> I forgot the fucking name of Del Taco. Well, maybe he's just getting older, man. Shit just happens. <laughs> That's no bueno, dude. I mean, it's not Taco Bell, but it's number two. Yeah, yeah. It's Del Taco. That's I could not remember Del Taco. <laughs> well, now, now you're surely not going to forget. I was just like, how the fuck do you forget Del Taco? So it's yeah. like, that's sometimes, know. but then there's other times. I've been to Del Taco before. So I'm like, but I'm doing all those like lines, man, and everything. Yeah, yeah. All these mushrooms help. Yeah. Natural. Uh, I don't get high. You, you microdose? I don't, but a lot of people love it. But I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I just, I don't, I'm not ready to be like, eh, like, but apparently people say it's not, it's amazing. But, yeah, my girlfriend microdoses all the time. And she says it's great. Yeah, people say it. Like, yeah. But there's a bunch of mushrooms you can do that don't get you high and just are like really productive. Yeah. You're taking them. It's something with like what the, the fuck is microdose. I mean, I'm not, I don't do drugs. I'm a, I'm a straight edge. I'm straight edge, dude. I'm straight edge. I'm as about as straight edge as they come, brothers. Pretty cool guy. What is that? When you just take a small dose of things, I imagine. Psilocybin or whatever. It helps with like anxiety and depression. I don't fucking know. I, I'm like completely clean. I don't just like psychedelics. I don't really care enough to look into it. Drink, I just drink like a couple of Red Bulls a day and that's pretty much it. Do you, did you ever do anything? Yeah. yeah I, mean, I stay away from the caffeine and stuff. I just feel like I try to stay away from caffeine. I try to stay away from like a lot of stuff. You know. Thank you so much for the $5 from Frames. I was watching your stream at a funeral and a joke you made, you said made me burst out laughing and now I'm kicked out of the funeral. I love your jokes, Papa. <laughs> I love you too. Is that a real thing? What joke is it that I made? That's funny. Yeah, I don't. You don't have to fucking donate money again. Just say to the chat and everybody will like at me so I can see it. Tons of drugs. I, I not like hard drugs. I've done like acid, Molly. I smoked weed. I've uh, I tried coke doing? a couple times. Uh, I've done some weed and I didn't like it because uh, I'm a cool guy. So I don't do drugs. Drugs are for little nerds, or losers. Uh, not for me. Uh, wow, yeah. a Brazilian who doesn't like coke. What is that rare? <laughs> it's very rare. Yeah, I uh, I tried it with. <laughs> I tried it with a friend of mine. He went off the deep end with a Coke, but I, I was just like... He kept doing it. Oh, he kept doing it. He was like so into it that he El was... Taco is dog food? Oh, okay. Maybe I would like it. I used to eat dog food. It's cheaper, dude. Why, why get human jerky when you could just eat fucking dog jerky? It's cheaper. And they don't have to label it, so you know it's good. You know what I'm saying? Still living with his parents in his bed. You don't have to like label the calories, you know? Sitting with the door open doing lines during the day, so that's how much he was into it. <laughs> day bumper. Yeah, day bumper. Wow. Yeah. Would the parents eat the, the Coke? With the they didn't care. Thanks. I don't know why. That's they didn't a true, that's a Latin parent right there. They don't care. They're like, yeah. we help sell that. Yeah. These are jokes, people. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, wow. So, yeah, you know what? There are people like you. That's brilliant. I've never tried Coke. Yeah. Um, only because I was scared. Like, I was like, I want to be successful. I had a friend who used to do it a lot. And it's weird. We don't hang out. <laughs> I don't know. Dude. I'm so straight edge. It's so fucking weird. It's funny. Um, what do you got adding me for, dude? Did he answer the question? This motherfucker didn't answer. I'm going to kill all of you. He didn't even answer the thing. Why are you telling me this? Stop adding me, dude. I'm fucked. You're done. I'm beating you up. And I'm always watching horror stories. But yeah. so you did, are you clean or you just don't do nothing? No, I don't even drink. I haven't. Macrodosing is something you're used for when you take a really small, barely per, uh, perceivable dose of my a psychedelic. Oh, what's the point? Does this still, I guess, have an impact on you? Or? I had a drink in like 12 years. Are having you smoked sober? Weed in six, seven years. I, guess, just, I, I guess technically I am. I mean, I just don't, I don't see the fun in it. Yeah. Also, I, I have to be like sharp. 
like not only to be on stage but also to like all the business ventures everything i'm doing I feel like most like a lot of comedians do drugs what going all the time like if anything know. he might benefit from doing something before the show he always seems so nervous every time we watch it. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take care of my parents, too. Like, I, I just don't. If I'm high, if I'm sitting, like, stoned on a couch. I, Your I'm parents live with you? I'm confused. Missing out on something that I should be doing. Your you know? mom's not going to eat. Yeah, well, not, they're, they're fine with money, but it's more of, like, my, my dad has, like, Alzheimer's. He's, like, pretty advanced. Oh, so, like, right. she needs, and she's older. So, mm-hmm. you know, they need help with stuff, you know. And it's either, it's just me and my brother, so. So, so you're being very responsible, which is nice. That's a beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah, and also, like. Beautiful thing, brother. Beautiful thing. The kind of business I run, like, I, I inadvertently take care of so many people too you know that mm-hmm. come through my building every night that i have to be like laser focused right so wait so <laughs> stop okay uh it was bid big ed section i'm four foot eleven but it's two separate measurements joke uh the groin oh okay <laughs> that's funny what's crazy so i'm driving so i like i become a fan of you because i'm watching you during the pandemic and i'm laughing you made me laugh a lot that's good and um oh, that's cool man that's and then nice day, i'm driving and i'm with my girlfriend and she goes she goes, oh, my God. Maybe this will be a wake-up call for this guy to get back into the content that actually made him popular. Look, she goes, Deaf Noodle Comedy Club. <laughs> I was at Toy. I was picking up some toy. And yeah. here you are. So what happened? You decided to open your own comedy club at the corner of, like, Gardner and Sunset? Yeah, that's exactly what it is, yeah. I, oh, I'm good. Like, literally across the street from Toy and Guitar Center. Yeah. So, which I love because I love that area, and it's all fucked up right now. But Did he actually go, though? I heard that he was supposed to go and, like... A set, which but you know what, good for Deaf Noodles, honestly. If it turns into a thing for him, eh, whatever, good for him. It's getting gentrified, it's coming it back. There's some huge condos, they're like 300 units that they're building across the street out of nowhere, which yeah. literally was a shoe store. But yeah. I mean, it's getting better. But I just hate it's either a condo or a fucking meth alley, yeah. And I yeah. hate the fact that it's not, but I love that you plop down there, yeah. So, t- damn, he's got the tipster effect when you look up Deaf Noodles, it's everybody but his channel. Did he get changed the name of his channel or something? No views, what the fuck? Which dude? one is actually did he just post this? Somebody asked me to. I fell off. Oh, he's trying to route people. Which one is actually shorts into his stuff? Okay. Do you have a friend zone memory? I've got a few to choose from. Oh. Okay. T- what happened? Did, did you? Did you? What? What? What brought all this on? Talk to me. So, because LA really needs another comedy club. Yeah, you, there's so many already. Well, you're eight. <laughs> you're eight. Let's go, let's go through them. You ready? Yeah. Store. Uh-huh. Improv, improv. Factory. Where's the fucking Jamie Kennedy thing? I thought he was there. Yeah. Okay. Then Ice House, Flappers. I read the frames reply, guys. What the fuck? Why do you keep tagging me in it? What the hell? Ha ha. The toe. Uh huh. Okay. The comedy chat, though? Yeah. Uh huh. That's seven I can think of. Yeah. And then you got all the, like, the minors. The, you know. But then there's all these other, like, rooms and pop ups. Yeah. You do a don't tell or different yeah. things like that. Um, and then there's, like, Jay Davis. He's got three rooms. And yeah. He's got Yamashiro and he's got the weed. Yeah. Um, and then, like you said, there's other, all different pop ups around. Then you've got the bourbon room. Yeah. Which one so, is actually hard? Listen, I'm all for it. I think that Somebody the world asked- is what you just said. It's going to become Wally. Like, it's either Wally's going to sit like this, but. Or eat. That's why you see all these dumb food influencers because they have nothing. Nobody needs them for anything. So they'll just shoot fucking lasagna in three different ways and act yeah. like they're doing something. This, yeah, yeah. So it's either going. Where does this guy post any of his like comedy club stuff? How- what? Like all things. I've somebody amazing. Everything here. aside, like I don't really understand. Like, okay. So when I <laughs> when I reframed my channel and I, ch- I changed it and I made the new channel and the old channel, right? Uh, like my old, my the old channel that used to be my main, I kind of just abandoned it for a while. And then I came back and now I just post the TikToks. It's the on there. The ones that are from TikTok, I post those on there. It's like a, a, cha- a garbage channel that like, you know, this way you could see those, right? Whatever I post on TikTok, I post on that YouTube. It doesn't matter. So like if, if that is this whole thing is like, oh, I want to be a successful comedian. Like how come he's posting the truth? I fell off. Uh, you win. I quit. I'm I'm transitioning to a girl with big titties. Uh, why? Why? Like, why do you think that this is uh, like something that makes you look good, or is productive? Like, this is this is just a hysterical mess. Like, this is not. This is nothing. This makes sense. Because, <sighs> like, let's ima- let's imagine that Dennis actually like is starting to kill it. Maybe he. Is. I nobody's watching his stuff. But like, let's say Dennis is killing it right now in his comedy club, which is possible. I don't know. If you see a funny clip, let's say you see like a, I tried to t- break my DoorDash guy and failed. I'm not going to watch it. I don't care. Let's say you saw this and you're like, wow, this was actually really funny. I'm going to go check this guy's channel out. And then you look and it's, this, this one is called The Truth I Fell Off. You're like, what the fuck is this? This isn't the content I like. I did it. So somebody- and it's him doing push-ups. Like, why would you stick around? Or you follow this guy, and then all of a sudden you're seeing a wave of just dumb shit that you don't care about. Like, what's the point at this point? Like, what? You, what would you? What's the point of this? There's nothing productive here. Um, watch the truth. It came off as super genuine. Uh, 
God will bring you back up. Give it a chance. Maybe we'll watch it in a sec. But like my thing is like, why do the spiral? Stop the spiral. Everybody, like, listen, you had your, your rough time. It's time to get your shit back together. Is that more centered? I don't know. It's time to get your shit back together. Stop posting dumb shit like this and just post clips from your comedy club. Plug your comedy club on the internet. I don't know if people are doing that right now, but like maybe you're the first or maybe you're one of the more prevalent people. You start posting it on there. You start getting more people on there. I mean, all it took was Jamie Kennedy seeing you had that you had a physical comedy club and he got excited about you. So why not put this on the internet? Then somebody, maybe somebody else, maybe Vince Vaughn. Ah, I saw like I can't do it, Vince Vaughn. He saw you on TikTok or YouTube. He's like, oh, I remember this guy. Like, I liked him a lot during the pandemic. Who knows? And then he all of a sudden, was like, why not? Why make this channel like this fucking spiral channel? Like, I, I don't understand it. Why have this spiral? I don't, I don't get it. Maybe we'll watch this after. If you guys want me to take a look at it, I don't really care too much. Going out to a concert, going out to eat, going to a festival, or going to a show. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Everything else will be in your phone. That's kind of Basically. what I believe. Yeah. And so I don't think it's a bad idea what you're doing. Yeah. I just, honestly, it came out. Uh, it, it came out of like this selfish need to be able to have time to do stand-up. So, so you wanted, oh, so you wanted to control the narrative. No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't even that. It was my YouTube work was taking up so much of my time yes. that I wasn't having time to go and go out and do stand-up. That's the world was opening back up. And I was like, I was getting weekly spots over at flappers and I wanted to keep doing that or, you know, and, and going to, and start going to other clubs and stuff. But I just didn't have the time. I didn't have time to go to like open mics and stuff. So my logic was, uh, I, I could diversify my business by building like studios in a building and have the front of the building be like a, a comedy club. Right. So what's I, the rest of the business for? Like, I don't understand. I could, you know, have a space to do stand up. you know? Uh, so wait, so all of this would have made sense if like he had maintained his job of doing like news in the morning. Um, and then he like, cause this is the thing. There was a time where he hired a whole team of people when he, like he used to do all of the editing, at least from my understanding, all the editing, all like the research for like his, you know, relevant news segment and then everything to himself in the morning. So it makes perfect sense to be like, Oh, you know what I'm doing really well. I'm getting like a hundred K views of video every day, which is good. I'm going to hire a team to start doing the research for me. I'm going to teach him to do the research for me. I'm going to teach him how I like work to be done because you know what? He might be very particular. I'm very particular. It's why I struggle to hire people. Um, even though I could, and it would probably make things easier and I could probably branch out a little more, but I'm like very particular and he was already hiring people. So clearly he wasn't as particular as I am. And then it's like, you do that. You hire some people. All right, cool. Um, and then you open up your comedy club and you focus that cause that's your passion project. Like, it, I, you know, the whole series of events just doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, I don't think that he's necessarily thinking about it. That's probably why it doesn't make sense. But, like, none of it makes sense. I mean, you know, everybody has their downfalls. You know, pull yourself out of your fucking spiral already. Like, enough is enough. You know, start, like, doing something constructive again. You know, if you're going to make that deaf noodle, if you're going to commit to doing the commentary because you don't want to do the daily news anymore, that's fine. But, like, commit to it in an, in a, in, in an effective way. Um... And like make your old channel about posting your comedy, make a TikTok that you post the same comedy stuff, the Deaf Noodles show, the Deaf Noodles, whatever, Schmingle Bang, and kind of just commit to that and then fucking do it. Like stop fucking around, you know? I said like all this weird like breakdown stuff. What happened? So what'd you do? Also, it was it was partly inspired by uh, Ronnie Dangerfield and Earthquake. They kind of did the same thing, right? So well, I know what Ronnie did. What Earthquake? Where'd he do it? He had a club too. Oh, okay. Where? Yeah. So, uh, but with Dangerfield, it was more of like he wanted to have a club so he could work out his bits to go to the Tonight Show, right? Mm -hmm. But with me, it's like I just want to have a place to work, you know. So you can work out your bits for YouTube. Yeah, for YouTube, or I can just I can just have a place where I'm constantly doing stuff without anybody having to control the stage and tell me how much time I get or whatever. I, I don't. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? Is it is it like a self admittance? You're too so charitable, Dennis. It's not like I'm charitable. I don't like this person. I just like don't care about what happened. Like however ago, like I'm never gonna like him, but I don't like hate him. Like, what's what's how do I how do I benefit as a person to be like, hey, uh, let me like hold on to hatred for this fucking guy. Like it doesn't benefit me at all. Like that'd be boring. If I got up every day, like my life is true. Like dude, I like all everything aside, I probably would be angry. My life is incredible. Like I'm a fucking YouTuber that reacts to videos for a living. I'm married to my fucking dream wife. I'm closer to my family than I ever been before. I make decent money. Like I don't have. The bill. I don't really have like the capacity to be fucking angry at people anymore. Like I don't. I don't even fucking like. I just can't. It's hard to hate. Like, you know what I mean. So uh, yeah. I mean, whatever. Like, I don't. I, again, I would never interact with this person again. I would never become like. I do an interaction that we would never become friends or anything. 
And honestly, that's more of my wife than me because I let things go very quickly. And she's like, there's some things that you have to just like not free introduce yourself to. And it's like, okay, that's fair. Uh, that's why like, I appreciate her. She's a very significant re- uh, part of the reason why I'm successful. And it's not because she hates him or anything. It's because, again, it's like it's like she's <laughs> she's probably a smarter businesswoman than I am a businessman, honestly. Um, you know, especially this year and a half has been about like not uh, necessarily inviting the particularly negative interaction. So, yeah, but like I don't hate this person. It's like whatever, dude. Like, but it's like it's 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 just additionally pathetic because like the thing that's a pathetic is that like when you see somebody who could be successful just like wasting them, like wasting themselves away. It's like what are you doing? Like it's insane, you know. I don't go off there and do like a half hour every day. I do as much time as I give every other comic, right? You but said, like, I don't want to do the gatekeepers. I'm going to yeah. keep my own gate. Basically, yeah. The quote DJ Khaled, like he has this thing where he says, uh, if they if they he shut says, the door Gatorade. in your face, uh, rip out the door and maybe build your own. <laughs> some shit like that. What's weird is why delete uh, previous news videos, but keep uploading some uh, same content in a new channel. I think Def thought he could start blank slate. No, well, it's not the same content. Like his relevant news stuff was like a bunch of little stories in eight minutes, six in the morning, which is very important. Is the first thing that you wake up to. You have your coffee, watching like a relevant silly like TikTok or, excuse me, internet drama, and then you're done. This new commentary stuff is like a longer form, and it's more about his personality. Um, so, so wait, so what made you pick that area, and how did it start, and how so, long have you had it? So yeah, so you know, there's that uh, old cliche for business. It's all location. Yeah. So I. I was looking for a good location and Sunset is like one of the best locations for this kind of business, you know? In the world. Yeah. So I, I had actually seen a place that was like about a mile east of it and it was perfect. It was like an old recording studio and, um, you know, the, there was like a whole space at the front that was already kind of set up. It could easily be like a, a stage area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it could be a stage area and then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's all good. Go it. So, uh, so it was like beautiful. It was great. But, because there there had been another person who had just moved into the building who was building podcast studios, they were like, oh, we don't want competing businesses here, right? Because they, they were scared we were going to run each other out of business, right? Because it was mm-hmm. a similar business. So I, I was like, fuck. So I had looked at that point when I found that place, I'd looked at over 300 places already. And what? Yeah. This Not was, in person. What, on like Zillow? No, no, in person uh, at like 10, but 300 listings that I had like inquired about had been, I, I spent like six months researching this. So That's a lot of time. Yeah, I want to make sure I found the right place, right? So I, um, I, I went back, started looking again, and I saw this like listing for a place that was on Sunset, um, and it was this old months. amp store. It was a Mesa Boogie. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it was this historic amp store, and I, I like the thing that drew me to it because I saw the pictures and I was like, "This looks kind of small. I don't know if I could build it here." But then I saw this thing, and I was like, I, "I just got to go to the place and look to see if they have this. And if they have it, I'm definitely gonna get this place." And what it was, it was a smoking Indian from Seinfeld. <laughs> they had that statue that was just like it. And I, I'm looking at it, I was like, I'm a huge Seinfeld fan. So I, yeah. I saw it, I was like, I have to go see it. So I went to go look at the place and it was like, uh, it was like, it was in such bad condition mm. because that store had been there since like the 70s, I think, like a For long sure. time. Uh, and they hadn't done anything to the building to like update or paint the walls or clean since the 70s. They sold amps. They, they sold amps, yeah. Amp. Yeah, like guitar amplifiers. Mm-hmm. That's Which probably don't use as much anymore. Yeah, it, it, yeah, most people just DJ nowadays. So That's true. Yeah. <laughs> So, I, you know, I'm, I'm walking around. I'm looking for the Indian. They, they took the Indian with them, but they left a whole bunch of other stuff there. Uh, but, yeah, I'm walking around, and I'm looking. And as I'm in the space, I'm like, okay, I could maybe make this work. And I'm starting to, like, imagine how I could, like, separate, like, the two areas and where I could build my office and all this stuff. But it definitely needed a lot of work, right? Uh, so I end up, you know, it was, it, was, uh, it was a crazy process. I'd never done anything in my life, like, renting a commercial space. They make you- I mean, the reason why he might have deleted his old videos on his main channel specifically is because it's not the same content that he's doing now and so he doesn't want people to be like oh i like this subscribe and be like oh what the fuck is happening now um again though like uh, you know his i don't understand like if you're gonna make that channel about posting your fucking comedy club like just do it just do that don't have public meltdowns talk to your girlfriend or something like all jokes aside like talk to somebody in the real world if you're feeling in your feels or you feel like because like i went through a sphere a, a phase on my tiktok now like but like a year ago where like i was feeling like a similar thing where I'm like oh, i'm just gonna shit post on a tiktok which by the way if you're gonna shit post i feel like tiktok is better than not your youtube channel <clears throat> so i get it but it's like how much longer are you gonna do this hysterical spiraling out you know you like get all kinds of insurance they do it like a like huge background check much bigger than like any uh, uh like residential space because they want to make sure you know you're like and no one's legit. renting it so it's funny that they really hustle you that hard i mean it was yeah it's funny but it's also like 
that so it's like a, it's it's a funny duality, right? Because it's it's Sunset Boulevard. It's like one of the most iconic boulevards in the world, 100%. right? And they're aware of that. At the same time, there's an awareness that this specific area, Sunset, something. because of the pandemic, because so many people, so many businesses have closed down around it, it's a little rundown, mm -hmm. right? Like when I went there, there were legitimately two homeless people encamped right at the front door, yeah, 100%. and uh, and there was human feces like right by the front door. Wow, for free? <laughs> Lucky you, dude. Or so. Uh, would I ever talk to Doctor K? I feel that would be a very interesting. Comment. Oh yeah, of course. I I think Doctor K is. Um, I I like Dr. K. I think he's prob Dr. K. I think that of all the content creators I've ever seen, I probably respect him more than any other content creator. Um, like I catch his stuff from time to time. I don't always have the mental capacity or like mental energy to do it because it's intelligent, right? And so like I like a, I like rotting my fucking brain <laughs> a lot of the time because I can't. I don't know if I, I I don't know if I could do it every day. It's a lot it's mentally exhausting to to engage like very intelligently the way he does. So I react to his video like that's like, you know, every minute is like five minutes of a regular video. If I do like an hour long Dr. K video, I've done five hours. You know what I mean? Because it's just it's I have to actually think. Uh, but like, yeah, that'd be phenomenal if I was ever able to. I don't think that I'm somebody that's interesting enough um, in my career that would like incentivize him wanting to talk to me. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just like, you know, it's almost a motivational way. I was like, oh, I can get there. Uh, but yeah, that'd be cool one day. Sure, that would that would. He's a good, he's a cool guy. So yeah, I mean, there's that understanding. But, but I gotta get level up that's more. That's why Fuck. I went through all of it because I was like, I saw the value of being on Sunset, less than a mile away from the store, less than a mile away from like all these major clubs. Factory, yeah. the factory, yeah. Uh, you know, you're not far from the strip club. It's gonna piss me. Yeah, out. there's one like like five blocks away. Yeah, Seventh Vale. Yeah, I, I don't know why I know that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you, you can't miss a sign. Mm -hmm. Raising. <laughs> well, I think he's making a joke about how he goes there. Hell. <laughs> so wait, so you go in and when did you open it? So how much money was it to open? I'm curious. Um, with the down payments and the insurance, just the insurance, just the insurance was like twelve thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, the down payments, like up front, was like another like twenty five maybe. And you have to do what? Did they charge you an arm and a leg? They I charge mean, you more than ten grand a month? No, it's yeah. like no, it's not that. It's like honestly, because I got it at like a low period, so it's I got it at a really good price. And I mean, it's half of the price of what it was. Like the, the other building was a mile down, and it's pretty much the same size. The building that I first saw that I thought was perfect was like eight thousand. This one I got for forty five hundred. You don't so, own it; you rent it. Yeah, I rent it. Yeah. So when you do all that work to a place, how do you pay for it? Because there's no way that your content <laughs> pays for it. I'm just curious. They get to keep oh, your fucking upgrades. Oh, fuck my yeah, boss. but annoying. there's like stuff that you know you can down the line like negotiate because I've done so many improvements, you know, to the to the space. Like I, I I'm really friendly with my landlord. I can negotiate like different you know things. Oh, do you live in it? No. So Maybe you have a, you live there and it's your office, your, but it's pretty big. Yeah, it's it's pretty big. Yeah. You could you could have lived in it. I could have. I, I really didn't want to. What I ended up doing was uh, sure, we'll I used to live it's in not a bad area to live. It's not. I mean, honestly, actually, I have to. It's not a good area to live in. I live there. So it's changing, this is, though, dude. Oh, so I, I used to live oh, in balls, North Hollywood when I got the place, and then I moved two blocks oh, away from the place. Man, I can say this now, I, I don't, because I'm not doxing myself. But I, I moved to Martell Avenue, which is like two blocks away. It's down the street from I think Poinsettia Park or something. Mm -hmm. It's great. It, it was nice because it was right by the park. It was like a farmer's market every Monday or whatever. It was a nice place. But I mean, I, I, I live in the valley again. I, I'm really. I love the place I live in right now because I, I got this huge house with a huge backyard. I, I have five dogs. They have enough space to run and stuff. But like I, yeah, where are you getting all this money from? There's no way that anything he's doing is like generating this income. <laughs> There's just no way. Uh, good for him, I guess. Either it's old YouTube money or it's his dad's money or something. Like because his dad's like legitimately rich. He left that part out. Um, he's, he's like a big. I think he was like a big, um, like uh, CEO or something. Like he's he's very. I forget the exact what it was. He's like very. He's got maybe he's like a decent amount of money. So. Holy I fucking fuck. hate. I, I would. I like hate it. Warner Brothers. He works for like Warner Brothers. I think in Brazil. I th I, from my last understanding of the situation. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, but living in West Hollywood because every day I'd wake up to a homeless dude jerking off on the street and That's like yeah, hot, dude. just like the most awful shit and like fights happening all the time and like I had I, I lived in a penthouse so I had the like the most amazing view of the Hollywood sign and everything it was beautiful really but it, 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 you were tired of people coming and doing a little pre cum on your yeah your the quality of life just was shit I felt trapped yeah you know I felt trapped in, in my apartment and you know luckily uh, I could just walk two blocks uh, and go to the office and I was so caught up with that but after I moved away moved to the house that I'm in at, at now like I I uh Fuck. I was like man what was I doing you know. I love that area where you're at. I love it. I know it's a little intense right now, but yeah. it will come back. Like yeah. you said, all these condos are being built. Yeah. So you have your podcast studio in there, and then you have your club. Yeah. So I have two well, podcast studios, and then I have like an office area slash yeah. like green room, and then there's a uh, the club at the front. Nice. And how many does it seat? Fifty five. Fifty five. And how often do you go up? Movie. Yeah, something, uh, like something in a movie industry. Yeah. Absolutely. Four times a night. How? We're running like open mics Monday through Friday, four times a night, and then on Saturdays we have shows. And then So do people come in and pay for a spot? Uh we have two of the mics are free and two are five bucks. 
I hate. Okay. Hate the charging. I'm not judging you. Yeah, yeah. But I love the fact that you don't charge. Yeah, it, they used to be all free, which is beautiful. They for the first like six seven months they were all free. all like it was uh, two or three mics that we ran. They were three times a day. Do people have to pay to to actually? go into the thing or maybe he just sells drinks and it's free i don't know all free and it sounds like the comedians have to pay like a fucking hairdresser which is like whatever i don't get the business i don't care but um like <laughs> do people pay to get in that's my question uh, part of the reason why i ended up having to charge five bucks was uh it, it's uh, there's the aspect of covering some of the rental costs but there's also like I, I was getting so many homeless people who would just come in and just like sit there and like, and, and then I, I didn't sure. mind, you know, to some extent, like, you know, I'm getting, they're like, you know, distracted from whatever's happening. Some of them would even go up. Uh, so a lot of what they would say. <laughs> some of them would have a pretty good set. A lot, no, I mean, yeah, there was one guy who was very funny. Mm -hmm. he, was whole, he was very funny, but the, like the majority of the ones that went up was like incoherent mm -hmm, shit. Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, follow that microphone. Yeah. Here's so, the thing. When I came up, I have a whole thing about it. I started in 1990. Yeah. So we never, no one ever paid, whatever, but we, we oh, that's my birthday, dude. Well, it's not my birthday. It's my birth year, I guess you'd say. Um, do it. It was a different time, dude. We would do it at places called coffee shops. Oh yeah, and there was no Starbucks, but it would be um, hippies. Like there would be hippies, but it would be like poets. Yeah, it would be like indigo girls. He must have money. Backyard home is definitely closer to half a million in the Hollywood area. Yeah, I mean that would I wouldn't doubt it. I would not doubt it. Style music. I think the indigo girls were actually on the circuit. It would be like interpretive dancers, and like, there'd be like five different art forms in comics. Yeah, and it was a freak show, and you'd sign up. And some of the places encourage you to buy something or you got to buy a tea or whatever. And I, we used to hate it, but we get it. Yeah. But now there's this whole thing of charging. But I do see it. It's annoying. I don't. I, I like that you're doing it because it's fair. Mm -hmm. They do. You have to have a barrier to entry. Yeah. But I also hate that there are people, and you're not one of them, that will fucking um, straight up like milk struggling artist. Yeah. And that's that, annoying. That that does suck. That's why I try to. That's why out of the four we have two or three. It's right? beautiful. That's and a then, beautiful thing, man. And then there are people like I have. I have a whole infrastructure where like people can become hosts at the club. And once they're hosts, they get everything free. They get not just all the mics, but they get the shows. They get access to like everything that we have at the club for free. Dude, so that's beautiful. So and you know. Uh, I, I would say that a good portion of our regulars are our hosts. Like we have a pretty tight knit community, and that you know that's really ultimately what I want to build, right? How did you get young comics? Did they just walk up to you? Uh, they just come to the club. They know they're, they're mics, and they come to the club to do it. But how long has it been open? They come all over the club. Uh, it's gonna be. I mean, as far as this format that we're doing, it's it's gonna be about a year now. Because the first six months, I didn't really do mics. I did like uh, one show a month. Yeah, so, but how did you? How did they do comics just walk? Well, I mean, at least in his offline, it sounds like if this is all true, it sounds like he's actually putting an effort into this. I mean, maybe he just wants to transition. Maybe he's doing better than uh, we all think, and he's fucking just his, his show, club is somehow very successful. Um, you know, maybe the people there's other people that go there that they people like to see, or maybe he does like decent money on drinks or something. And hey, God bless him. Maybe he's packed out. Maybe he's doing very well. Who knows? But I doubt it. But hey, walk up and knock on the yeah, door. Yeah, it's like word of mouth, you know. Dude, so okay, so you got the club, yeah, and your mics are like five to what? When so start? we have one at five, one at seven, one at nine, and one at eleven. Seven days a week, uh, Monday through Friday. What about the weekend? And you so on weekend, shows? on Saturday, we have uh, like these drop-in classes. If people want to come in and workshop, it's mm -hmm. ten bucks. Yeah, and they they work they work with somebody like who's uh, you know a working comic. Yeah, um, and and then at night we have the shows on Saturday. So it's a little bit of a school, a little bit of a club, yeah. multiple things. But it's not really. It's just like th that stuff is I like. I like the helping, and there's a little bit for people's time and expertise. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. There, there what, what I was talking about was something different. About yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I know what you're talking about, and there are. <laughs> He's like afraid to criticize Dennis. It's interesting. You must really like him. Maybe they'll kiss. They could do like an OnlyFans. That could be kind of hot. Places that are like that, like you, they, the business model is to make money off of the comics. Yeah. The okay. idea is like, I'm just trying to offset the cost on the place and also like the barrier to entry. Like, and it, it was like, it wasn't a decision that I made lightly because for the longest time, three of the mics were free and then it was just one was charged. Mm. And I thought he said that they were all free and then he went to two free and now, why is it changing? It's just like a weird... <laughs> And I ended up having to swap it out because, like, one day, I mean, it's it's pretty funny, but I, it, like, one day it was raining. It was like this was maybe like two months ago. It was raining, and uh, we had a full house for like an open mic. I had like thirty people there when it's only fifteen spots for the mic, and like five about, minutes, five minutes. It was five minutes each. Yeah, but no, what, well, that. the reason why we had so many people is like half of the people who were there for the audience were like regular audience members. People who, because we get that as well. We have people walking off they the street who want to go. No, they don't pay. No, no, you mean actual audience members that are actual going audience out? members? Yeah, but so we had seven audience members, and then the rest were all homeless people who were running from the rain. And, and it was funny because yeah, they all had their homeless signs on the side of the building. Yeah. <laughs> and they were all, and yeah. You know, so damn, you would have think that they would have kept. They would have wanted to keep those homeless signs with them, and that's got to be like a hot commodity. Oh, that was one day that I, I, I was just sitting there and I, I was just watching that and I, I, I you know, and, and then I had a comic go up and, you know, he was working on his jokes and stuff. He was like, you could tell the guy was workshopping and like trying to figure things out. And then the next guy that went up was a homeless guy and 
just total incoherent babble, right? And it was like, it, it was like he was having like some kind of schizophrenic thing happening. And I'm watching this and I'm thinking like, okay, I have to make a decision. Am I going to try to solve LA's homeless crisis or am I going to try to make this a safe space where comics can come and work on their stuff? So, and that's where like I consulted with a lot of people. I wonder if this is true or if it's just like an excuse. Well, I talked to them and they said, maybe you should just start charging yeah. for this other mic and you still have two that are free. It's really you nice know? of you, dude. This is really nice of you. You're doing it the most generous way of anyone. And that's really nice of you, dude. Yeah. Um, but let me say this. So like, uh, what I just don't understand is how does the free mic work versus the not free mic? Like, how come the homeless people can't just use the not free mic? Or why can't they just use the free mic? Why, you know what I mean? Like, come in and just use the free <laughs> I guess I just don't understand it, how it works. Is that, you know what's crazy about comedy is I always get mad about it. There's no barrier to entry. You know, anyone can start. And it's like, I was the same way. Like, I didn't know anything. And I would just sign up and stuff. And what was the difference between me, me and someone else? I just didn't look like I shit in the street, but I kind of did because I was, I was homeless, but not homeless homeless, but I was homeless in the sense I slept in my car. I had a car. Yeah. Or I was sleeping on someone's couch and I didn't shit in the street, but I shit in the toilet that I didn't own because yeah. I borrowed someone's toilet. So, I mean, you know, there's levels to it. I, yeah. I think there's. You put it like in the back of your car or how does that work? Slightly, obviously, if the people are shitting in the street, they're mentally crazy. No, I'm talking about like yeah, a homeless person who who yeah. shouldn't be on the street. I'm not talking. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. Get you. yeah, somebody who has like a like a some kind of a disability, like PTSD or something, and they're like fucked in the head. I, I, I'm not talking about comedian who's trying to make it living. No, this I know. doing that stuff. But I'm trying to be as altruistic yeah. as I can. But yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. But the thing is, so anyway, this is an amazing under undertaking that you're doing, and it's working. Yeah, it's working. And so you have maybe I don't know if it is. Is it working? Who knows. So you go up every night, you do your five, and yeah. then you're building a community of comedians. Yeah, and, that's the point, yeah. And so now, and then on the weekends, you're doing showcase shows. Yeah. Or like headliner shows, what you say. Yeah, yeah, I try to uh, I try to build a show, like get a, a solid headliner, right? A big headliner, somebody with like a name, and then I try to give the, the comedians at the club uh, like an opportunity to be on a show with like, like a, who? Who's like the headliner he's gone before? Bigger name, and also to use it. So each show is so like- Why not put that on like your channel? Like make that like your part of your channel, like the headliner. Like, oh, we had fucking Schmingelbop here. Whoa, I love Schminglebop. He's like my favorite, dude. Holy fuck. How'd you get that guy, you know? Uh, that I'm doing from this, this show series. They're curated or like part, like half produced by myself and as well as like one of my hosts to give them the opportunity to use the show as a networking opportunity so they can get themselves booked on other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so they'll book people that they, you know, so they can exchange. Because that's what happens a lot. Like, oh, yeah, I'll book you. You book me, right? Yeah. So I, I try to, you know, uh, yeah, I try to make it feel like they can get that. Where do you think comedy is going to go? Um, I mean, more online, I guess. I, I feel like there are people who may have wanted to be stand-up comedians that are just like, no, it's better to do something online because you can do like a skit um, and you're better off doing some skit on TikTok that could potentially blow you up than doing stand-up. You know, I think it's probably not a bad idea to try to do stand up, record it, and then if you're getting laughs from the audience, post that up on the internet. But you know, that could also be hard, especially well, in general, it's difficult to do stand up. But then it could also be additionally difficult if um, it could also be additionally difficult if the audience that you're appealing to uh, isn't like uh, is is substantial or in the person is substantially different than the audience on the internet, so it might not necessarily be received well. But like, hey, why not? Fuck it. I'm fascinated by people that start now because. Here's what I think it is. Yeah. When I started, it was to get five minutes to get on TV or to get an agent yeah. on a showcase night. So all the big clubs had showcase nights. Mm -hmm. And then you get an agent. Yeah. And then you get a TV credit, like on Comedy Central or something, like mm -hmm. five-minute spot. And then from there, you work up to, like, you know, Tonight Show, Letterman, stuff like that, or Conan. Yeah. And then from that, you get a sitcom holding deal, and then you get a sitcom, and then you get a movie. And that's how it was. And then you become a stand <clears> and like colleges and all this shit. Mm -hmm. But since so many things are irrelevant now legacy media is dying it's yeah. the brands are not dying the awareness but the viewership is yeah so now like i did this podcast a couple weeks ago and this guy had an amazing studio in naples florida shout out caleb and he had comics on he what he does is every time a comic comes to the club he has them on his pod mm -hmm. they help him he's building his podcast he he helps them yeah, you can just make your own tiktok do like a small show put it on tiktok you know what i mean that's that's where it's going where it's going is that there is generally like a little more power and every individual has a little bit more power to be successful and they have like tools to do it themselves now um because they have social media and they don't have to be effectively gate kept. So I think it's overall a pretty positive thing. It, it does blur the landscape, but I think it's a positive thing overall. He's locally big and growing nicely. And <clears throat> he had comics on that were selling way more tickets than me I never heard of. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a good sense of like people have these followings, these fandoms. Yeah. And it's all, so you, I would tell people now just, Gotta be tough for like an older person that doesn't understand TikTok. I mean, I'm an older guy, but like I blew up on TikTok, so I have like a better understanding than probably most people my age. But it's got to be difficult as like an older person who doesn't quite understand it to shift so drastically because things didn't change slowly. Like technology has hit hard. Um, 
you know, even like when it comes to like news or media consumption, we still don't we still don't fully understand how much it's destroying people's mental health. You know, on the internet, constantly seeing the worst of the worst in every part of the country makes you feel like everything is worse than it ever has been, even though things are like better than they have been overall on like a curve. It's like detrimental to mental health. We still don't even understand that fully. That's a newer conversation, even though this has been around for so long, because we're just it's just so much so fast. And it's just like so it's amazing. At the same time, it's so destructive. Look, you're I'll build up your talent, but you know, you don't have to worry about legacy media. Yeah. But it's I, like to me, I guess if I was starting out now, I was just like I want to be able to get good, sell tickets. Mm hmm. And then become my own entity. Yeah, I think honestly, uh, I think that the difference between the path you, that you described of like traditionally going down, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I think that the difference to now is that instead of one path, there are many. I know, which is annoying. Yeah, because like we would audition eight people. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not. It's a, it's probably would be annoying for somebody who's gone through the traditional path and made it, and they're like, damn, there's so many other paths that are like easier. So make it annoying to you, but to other people, it's fucking great. And I remember this night, eight people. We talk about being bumped. I was bumped. Yeah, by Rodney Dangerfield. <clears throat> he came in to run his Tonight Show set. Yeah, yeah. And I was auditioning for Comedy Central. And there was like two slots in eight comics. Yeah. And I got it only because I actually had a pretty good set, but it was also because they fell for me and I followed the, the super legend. Yeah. But the network wanted me. Was I don't know. I was coming up. I wasn't that I wasn't that good yet, but it was like oh, we like this guy. So yeah. they picked me, but literally six people got effed out. Yeah. Do you remember time. who those six people were? Yeah, some good ones, but my <laughs> <laughs> they were good. But it's like it, it, I'll tell you how fair. But the yeah. bottom line is is like the wall had one thing to the top. If I can see, but now you can have multiple climbers. Yeah. But that was a, a funnel system that was like, you're going to be seen. Yeah. But even, now you can have everyone can, there's many outlets, but are they going to be seen? So even the definition of what the top is has been redefined. A thousand percent. So, uh, I don't know. I like, I like the way it is now because it feels more democratic. I, dude, I do. I'm with you, but you have to look at the pros and the cons. Yeah. What, what do you like about it? I mean, what's the con? Everybody has like more fair shot because they're able to go onto like TikTok and stuff or onto other social media. Um, so like, what's really the con, I think. Uh, I like the fact that you can basically actually like other than it's more information like more than other than it's like oh it's a lot to navigate and have to learn I guess what's the, really the con be like a self-made person I like that you can you can go you can hustle you can build a social media following and you can just you know go on the road do your own business by yourself you know you don't need you can have an agent and a manager but you don't necessarily need one agreed uh, you can have multiple streams of income with like a very low production cost mm -hmm. and just do everything yourself you know and I, I'm not That's saying true. it's ideal it's a lot of work and at some point if you want to scale you're going to have to get somebody to help you mm -hmm. but it, it's, uh, it's a lot more freeing in terms of the career path choices that you give yourself it's less freeing in terms of time because it's going to be a lot more time consuming mm -hmm. but you'll be able to actually carve out the career you want for yourself free uh, a lot more time consuming i guess in the sense that like you have more tools at your hand and you just a lot more that you can do so it's more time consuming i guess yeah sure i suppose like it does consume time like back in the day it's like oh, let me practice my comedy set i'll go like once a week blah 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 that's a traditional media way whereas like now it's like okay i gotta get something out on like fucking social media xyz every day uh sure i guess of the limitations that traditionally were there, right? That an agent would say, don't take this role because you're going to make yourself look like this. You just go out and fucking do it. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and I think it's, a, <sighs> it's in terms of uh, a professional career, it's a lot more freeing. Thousand percent agree. Yeah. What don't you like about it? Uh, I mean, probably just how time consuming it all is. Uh, That's okay. So I have two comments on that. A yeah. is that you are right, which like I remember when I was doing press for a movie. Oh, um, like one of my first movies was Scream, and when we do press, we would just get picked up in a town car, yeah. and we would just show up, and you would do radio in the morning, you would do ra something in the afternoon, like the papers, mm -hmm. and then at night you would do a TV appearance. Yeah. You didn't have to do nothing. They literally put a spoon in your mouth. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean, fake your coffee. And then when I found my first headlining gig at a club, you know, in colleges when you do it, they just give you a buttload of money and they fly you in and you do it, you leave. Yeah. Well, clubs were like, well, you need to do the radio, we need you to promote this, we need. And I was like, for the club, shouldn't people just show up? So, and it's gotten way crazier with social media. Now yeah. you got to post, you got to do links and all this shit. So I grew up with a golden spoon, and then I got, as I got older, I got harder work. But mm -hmm. I can understand how this harder work shows you your real results and what you, Dennis, is bringing to each club and each show because they can look at the metrics. Yeah. So it, I have a taste of both worlds. But one thing you're leaving out is this: is that there's something to be said about being picked by the gatekeepers. Yeah, I mean, I imagine it makes you feel good because you're like, wow, I got picked, even though there's like one in a million shot. Uh, sure, I guess so. But I mean, you still get there's still those gatekeepers. I mean, there's still some forms of legacy media like NSNL still exists and is pretty uh, and is pretty influential. You know what I mean? If they pay, if you're that, and that's what the, the goal is, right? Is to use social media to get picked like you can make your own career now. Which is great, but also like your goal is generally still to, to to work with these individuals. You just have more power in your own hands, which gives you more bartering power when it comes to dealing with some of these legacy individuals. Uh, I I could see that it's like the tastemakers like it fuck with you. Yeah, I mean like this whole 
that this new way of operating is like why someone like Shane Gills and I like Shane Gills a lot. He's probably one of my favorite comedians. Um, you know, Lucy Gay is pretty good too, but that's just because I'm not a woman in a room alone with him. But I do like him a lot. Uh, <laughs> but like, yeah, he like Shane Gillis is only like popular because you know he got fucking hardcore canceled for you know a joke on his podcast, and now he's back. He's been able to kind of get his stuff back together because that's what he did. He would do sets apparently, and he would put them up on social medias and whatnot. And I was able to really you know push him forward because if they do have taste. If they have taste, yeah, and you have to look. I'm not saying I'm saying there might be more people that think they're tastemakers in, in Hollywood that are, but there are tastemakers. You know what I mean? There are amazing directors, there are amazing casting directors, there are amazing clubs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So if you get blessed by those things, which I still know your generation, I always tell your generation don't worry about it because at the end of the day, a lot of people just want to sell tickets. Yeah, and if you become huge, they'll they'll jump you in. But it wasn't always like that. It yeah. was about like, do I enjoy what this person does? Yeah. But there is something to be said about it because it is like. They, they know what they're doing. I'm not saying all of them, but uh-huh. I'm saying it's nice to work, get blessed by somebody that you respect and you think is super talented. And, yeah. th- and the problem now is the narcissism that we've all had inside of us since the beginning of time is running so fucking rampant. No, I agree, yeah. your generation, they think views means talent. Yeah. It's that's, not talent. So that's a... Co- um, yeah, I mean, it depends, honestly. Like, that's one thing. It's an interesting conversation that people think that views and likes means that people uh, like you for a certain reason, right? Just because something gets a lot of views or a lot of likes doesn't necessarily mean that they like you a lot. It might mean that they think you're a fucking loser and they think you're hilarious, like lol cow stuff. And I think that like a lot of people with intellectual developmental disabilities struggle with this more than anything else because they'll get like bullied and clowned on it. They're like, oh, people like me. It's like they don't, but they don't understand that. Um, it, yeah, for sure. That being said, like if you do get a lot of views and likes and it is because people like you, then yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, you know, it is, it can absolutely be like a big thing. Um, it just depends on on what it is. You know what I mean? It depends on how productive those views, likes, and followers, by the way, are. You know, are they following me for the right reason? You know, like if you do a certain type of content and you get a lot of views doing a video that's not like your typical content, that's probably, even if you get a lot of followers, it's probably not a good thing because they're expecting a certain bit of content. You know what I mean? They're sec- uh, expecting a certain. Uh, type of uh, show for me, we'll say. So not all views are good views. I agree with that. But generally, also, they can be in many instances. Oh, that is, I do agree with that. That is a common misconception. But it doesn't of, mean you won't sell. And it's also like back in the day, until you were on TV, you were talking to very small uh, spheres of people. So if you're a comedian or anything really, but a comedian from like a smaller town, you might have like really good humor to them. Um that might not necessarily translate, but now there's so many different like in, in the in the more mainstream. But now there's so many different spheres of influence on TikTok that like somebody who might fucking even suck dick in their own town might do extraordinarily well because you can get the niches from like all over the world. So definitely a uh, definitely a very complex sphere now. Well, a thousand more tickets than me, but I'm just like saying, where do you? St- and that's when I go back down. I'm big on legacy. Like, yeah. what have you done to left a legacy? Yeah, I, I think that a lot of people like that. With- Sounds like he's a little bit in his own feels. Not gonna lie. As far as the views thing, a lot of people forget that there are a lot of factors that contribute to somebody getting a lot of views. It may, it, it, a lot of them, like you said, don't relate to talent. It's like, do they look good on camera, right? Uh, is this some well, kind of halo effect has always been an impact? A salacious drama, you know, dramatic situation. Uh, sure. uh, you know, did they for some reason uh, uh, hit some weird meme in some weird community that people don't know about that all of a sudden blew it out? You know, I'm a fan of it if you get views. Yeah. I love it when people get views. I'm, I, what I'm trying to state is this: is that get all the views you want, be incredible. Mm. But don't, if it's not something that's really amazing that you're yeah. doing, please don't act like it is. That's yeah. all I'm saying. It's the equivalent of like someone who goes on OnlyFans, and there's levels to it, but let's just say it does hardcore sex on OnlyFans okay. and think in 10 years it's not going to affect their mental health. Yeah. Uh, it's delusional. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Like if they keep doing it, it would probably impact their mental health, but I don't think that just the act of doing the OnlyFans, like it depends on how long you do it for and how much you're willing to sell of yourself. But sure, I get what you're saying. Yes. Yes. Thank you. But it doesn't mean you can't make 10 million a year. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and you should do it, but don't act like you're doing a fucking great piece of art that's gonna last the test of time. That's all, and be respectful because there are people now that aren't respectful. I'm like, what the fuck? Who the fuck is he talking about, though? I'm kind of curious. And then they have seven million followers. And I'm yeah, like, so yeah, I think <laughs> it sounds like you're referring to someone specific. I want the fucking tea, dude. Who are you talking about? What you said is, I was just thinking about this the other day. Like, there's such an oversaturation of content. Like, what is actually going to last? Because there's so many. Yeah, there is a lot. It's because there's so many different people consuming. That's why I think that things are shifting, um, into a different atmosphere where like it's more more about smaller niches like i think the reason why i'm like any level of successful is because there's like a few people who like watching me there's enough of them that, that like watching me um 
that enjoy me and my content that but it's like that are all from all around the world like i don't know maybe not all around the world but you understand like all around the country and whatnot different a couple different countries but <clears throat> mostly white countries um <laughs> But I, I don't know if I would be able to be successful uh, doing something like this if it, if this wasn't available. I really don't know. You know, I've been told to have like a, a voice for radio, but I think that they're just calling me ugly. So who knows? But yeah, so many, so many people posting. So many like I, there was just this uh, this uh, TikToker who was just like blowing the fuck up, and she was at the studio shooting a podcast for uh, the, these two guys who shoot their podcast there, and uh, she was talking about. Does he have a studio that he lets people do podcasts on? Is that what he does? Uh, I, should I mention all their names? I guess. Go for uh, yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, so, let's, we're going to get in trouble. No, we're not going to get in trouble. Uh, her name's Tara Yummy. I don't know if you've heard of her. Tara Yummy, I do not. She's like blowing the fuck this up on TikTok. This is why I love you because you keep me into the world of stuff I don't know. Yeah, so the, she's this chick that's like blowing the fuck up on TikTok. She's like everywhere. And as she's, what? what as like thing? an influencer. Her thing an is influencer like, of what? She does story time. She talks about what does that like, mean, Dennis? That means she tells. Yeah, I hate the term <laughs> influencer. I'm influencing. So she tells these like embarrassing life stories that okay. sometimes are. She's blowing up right now is. She's been blowing up since five years ago. Or maybe that's... Okay, whatever. Funny. But okay. they're mostly relatable. Right? Okay. And uh, so she... Story just, time. Yeah, so she just had like a, a national sold-out stand-up tour that she did. Oh, good for her. She never did stand-up once in her life. Wrote an hour-long set. Traveled the whole country doing it. Sold out. Like 200, 300 seaters. Okay? Around oh, the good for her. country. And that's like... Wow. You know, that's She did like, an hour? She did an hour. Without yeah, but, testing it? Uh, without testing it. <laughs> but a lot of it is just her telling... This according Was to her. Was it at clubs? Uh, no, like I, oh, I, I thought that Dennis like talked to this person, had him her in his club. It's what it sounded like originally, but it just sounds like he was listening to her talk about it. Okay, I don't know what kind or of her venues, own pop-ups. I think they're mostly pop-ups. I don't okay. know because I, you know, uh, meaning that a club that she just four walls herself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, so yeah, good for her. She said a lot of it was just her story times, right? Her telling stories, and you know, uh, she mm -hmm. took a break because apparently she said she she didn't know how to drink water on stage. Uh, <laughs> So she, she took what? like a small break and had somebody else come in for five minutes. And then like the whole show was. I mean, that's not a bad idea. If you're doing a whole show, why not give yourself a break anyway? Like if you don't have the capacity to do it. Because I imagine if you've never really done it before, it could be a very jarring experience. So yeah, sure. I mean, it's kind of smart to have like yourself an intermission for, just to take a break. It's like an hour long. <laughs> Kara, I can help. Wait, so what? So how, how old is she? I have no idea. Like she She's 23. That's what I just looked at. Probably, she looks like friend? She, no, no. She was just there shooting a podcast at the on studio. somebody that you use yeah, yeah, friends yeah. from you. Yeah, somebody who produces a podcast at the wow. studio. Wow. Oh my yeah. god. And how you don't know how old she is? She looks like she's uh, early mid twenties. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. How many shows did she do? I think she did like twenty shows. Listen, I'm not surprised. There, uh, there's an amazingly, really highly respected club. I mean, and there's a lot of them, and they're you know some of them are real picky. Mm -hmm. And they had this person on that was more of social media famous getting into stand up because mm -hmm. stand up is a way to you it's becoming such a broad term now i mean yeah. to me stand up is bill burr yeah. and george carlin you know yeah. what i mean that's that's what we have that's what you know the, the mecca of comedy is yeah, right? yeah, yeah so but you know some of these people are doing stand up and it might be gatherings you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying but like so this club had me on the weekend and i sold you know fucking 70 60 percent of my tickets which isn't terrible let's just say i sold 11 out of 1100 i sold it you know 72 720 out of five shows right yeah and Ooh. I was, and then an influencer came on a Monday and was selling double my price and doing two on a Monday, two on a Tuesday, adding shows. Wow. Yeah. And I go, you know, no offense to myself, but just why don't you put them on the weekend and then I'll do the fucking Monday, right? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, because they can't do more than 15 minutes. Huh. And so he's like, my club has a rep of being like, great. And it doesn't mean they're not going to. Oh, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that obviously, I was just saying before, like if these people are new to stand up, I imagine that's one of the things going through the legacy aspect is that you learn how to do it correctly and you learn how to uh, build up like a tolerance to being able to be on a show on stage. Like I can imagine it could be very jarring uh, or very difficult to do like a very long set. I mean, you're going to burn yourself out. There's so many people watching you. You're probably like anxious. Your anxiety is fucking exploding all over the place. You've got all these like different emotions, et cetera, et cetera. So like, yeah, that makes sense as to why. Um, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I'm going to be great, but it's like he makes money. Yeah. They get the stage time. Yeah. It's an off night, so it's a special thing. And then he puts That's comedians that are more you know, known and can do an hour, an hour and a half on the weekend. So the club still has the club because if they come, a person can only do 15 minutes or whata whatever. Yeah. So even when I was known, I didn't have more than 15 minutes. and that's I, But it would be like I was be opening or middling for Bob Saget or Craig Shoemaker or Rick Overton. They let me, and I was known, and I couldn't do more than 15 minutes. Yeah. So that's, and then like they would have like amazing comedians like Ian Bagg who was hosting. You yeah. know what I mean? So you would have these packed shows. Mm -hmm. So th that is a fascinating thing that I love. And I've, I've heard this of people... There are people that are really good that then become um, blow up off of social media. Yeah. And then there are people that blow up off of social media and have to get good. So yeah. obviously the first one is preferred. Mm -hmm. But I mean, look, if, if, if your fans fuck with you and you can do that for an hour and they pay and they're happy, then 
I see no problems. Yeah, I, I God think, bless it. I think that what's, what's that's incredible though. That's, it is. That's the new world that you're talking yeah, about. But it's so interesting because it's like you know if you're identifying like oh man, <laughs> the number one thing to take away from it is like if you're such an experienced uh, comedian like hey what, and maybe he does this but like hey maybe it's time for you to learn how TikTok works. You know, and it can take a while to figure out like a different niche and, and all that. But you know, go through some of your old sets or your new sets and try to get like one of your bits and jokes in there. And you know, part of it, whether you like it or not, is going to be almost performing for TikTok. You know, having a segment in your in your thing where it's like, oh, this is going to be like a segment for my TikTok. You know, maybe it'll be appealing, which is something that you will like learn as time goes on if you have to. But you know, why not try to appeal to that? And there was a guy I worked with years ago. And he's all a lifer in this business. I'm going to mm. do it, but I'm not going to say his name, but he said, we did a movie and he kind of talks like this no. and we did a movie and he said, you know, it's not as sexy as it once was, but you make a living. <laughs> and That's I was, a really good way of putting it. And <laughs> I was like depressed, but he was like, you know, you make 2 million a year, which is great. <laughs> but like to him, the days of like making 40 million. Is he making fucking 2 million a year? Or maybe that guy was making, that's fucking, God, that's crazy. God bless. That's true. In a year, we're gone in his eyes, which I yeah. don't think they are, but I understand what he's saying. Yeah. But but you, he's like, now what business is? He make a living, and you have these journeyman creators, whether it's actors, whatever. Yeah. And so I think that is good. Yeah, I mean, I imagine that there's less like individuals who are famous, and there's more people being famous. Well, okay, there's there's less super famous individuals. There's like micro celebrities. Like there's more celebrities. They're not as big individually, um, but there's more of them. You know, and again, I think it it helps uh, satisfy like individual niches. But it's not as sexy as seeing, you know, discovering Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you think there's going to be another Ryan Gosling? Uh, he's such a unique talent. Yeah. No, but I think like in terms of what you're saying, the star wattage. Yeah. Dude, it's 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 he's the one of the last of the breeds. You know, like it's it's it, a different time. It seems like because everything is so saturated, there's so many people. It seems like that whole Hollywood star model like is going to just go away. How Probably a good thing. Some of those models can be really fucking oppressive. And again, like you're very, I mean, that's honestly why you had like these Harvey Weinstein characters pop up because you needed them so they they could do whatever they could make you do whatever they wanted you to do because you needed them. So it's kind of fucked up. And you, you got, I love to hear this from you because I think that why I really dig you is because I love the Hollywood star model, yeah. but I'm also uh, love the newness of your model. And I hate to see relevance because everything is relevant if people watch it. Just, I mean, what model are you referring to? Honestly? <laughs> just like wondering. But I think sometimes people are like, well, you're relevant, you're not relevant, but you are relevant. Like, I may not be relevant in some people's eyes, but I'm relevant in all the comedy clubs I sell out. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I may not be relevant in the movie business to your eyes, but I'm relevant on TV because I'm on a game show every day, fucking twice a week, you know? Yeah. But it's like, oh, so relevance point. is a, what is it? Relevance Rele is a term that just gets thrown around too I much hate, on the internet. And I hate like, sure, like yeah, people do that all the time. They'll tell you that you're like you fall off, or you're irrelevant, or you're this or you're that. But then when it really boils down to it, like how poorly are you really doing? You know, you're really only going to know yourself, and then it's and oftentimes not even worth proving to somebody like, no, I'm relevant. And then you start engaging with like a nobody that doesn't matter. It's like, no, I'm relevant. This is how much money I'm making. It's like, is it really worth having the conversation with some fucking nobody? Because it pisses me off too when people are like on TikTok. <laughs> but it's like, whatever, man. Like, what are you going to do? There's nothing you could do. Yeah. It doesn't take into account that the uh, internet and just the entertainment business itself has been so niched up so that like you can be so relevant in a community and the rest of the world doesn't know who the fuck you are. Exactly. Like the person you just yeah. named, she's super relevant, yeah. but I don't know who she is. Or like the but Minecraft she, community. Like those guys exactly. are huge. They're like tens of millions of followers. They walk out on the street and nobody knows who the fuck these guys are. And it's insanely smart, dude. You said like they're not because they're on People Magazine. Yeah. So what you just said is you're right. It's the star system is, I think, I talk about it. It's done. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. So I agree that Hollywood will be done. I think that Netflix will run. I think Paramount will be bought. Mm -hmm. I think Apple will buy like a big place like Disney. Yeah. And I think it's going to be tech companies. And Pretty it's much, like yeah. legacy Maybe. media mm -hmm. and brands that you build. Yeah. I mean, I, I still think that there are going to be like some structures there, but yeah, sure. Yeah, that's pretty much where it's going, I think, yeah. Because it tends to consolidate. Every business, it gets super, like, fractured, and then it consolidates. And that's what we saw even with the pandemic, because I remember- oh, your brother's birthday? Uh, happy birthday to him, bro. It's my brother's in two days, so. Before the pandemic, th there was this, with traditional media, they had this huge, like, uh, they were so yeah, against the streamers, right? And, and, like, just being, streaming, whatever. And then everybody went, like, that's when Peacock launched. Like, everybody launched Disney+. Plus. They all launched their own, and it, it just felt like, okay, we're all in the business now, in the streaming business. And it feels like it even took away some, from the like the theatrical one, yeah, side of the movie business a little bit because it's like sometimes you'll get the movie like within a week on Amazon. You can just rent it out while it's still in the movie theater. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably smarter. Honestly, it's interesting because you saw so many malls close down. And I think the biggest reason why, well, part of it's because Amazon fucking undercut a lot of these, like, you know, they undercut people. They closed like a ton of bookstores. So they took like, a huge loss. It, it should be considered illegal, but whatever. No, that's not the conversation. One of the reasons is because they did very little to shift. And again, it's hard to shift when you have this massively... Um, very quick change, right? When it comes to social media, 
Um, but one of the things that needs to change is places need to become destinations more. Right. So what the fuck was all that? Malls? What was I? What was I? Dude, I'm like so tired. Was I talking about malls specifically? I'm generally speaking that like places need to become better destination spots where like you actually want to physically. I'm talking about movie theaters. Holy fuck, my brain is rotted. So like, how do you make a movie theater a destination? Somewhere that's like an enjoyable experience. You know, better chair experience is always good. I like a good comfortable chair. Um, but then like cool statue. It sounds stupid. A cool statue with a fucking water fountain. Like people like weird shit like this. There's like fucking the Annapolis Mall and like wherever the fuck that is. Maryland or something. Uh, they have like this little beach looking area on the inside, stuff like that. Or um, how about a rest, like a, actual affordable restaurants inside your movie theaters, things like that. Because without those things, like what what are you really doing? You know, you have to adjust and make destinations. You have to, there has to be a reason to get out of your chair and go there instead of just watching it on your TV. And so you want to create like a nice experience that people will actually enjoy. Um, a treat, you know. And I think that there obviously has to be a balance a little bit. Because, I, I mean, you know, people, when they go off for a treat, sometimes they like spending money. So if your food's too cheap at the movie theater, people are going to be like, oh, this isn't a treat anymore. This is slop. I could just eat this slop at home. But if it's like a reasonable price, like restaurant price, where it's like restaurant quality food, and you would replace the atmosphere of sitting down and being served with like watching a movie, um, uh, if watching a movie, I think it would be like, oh, this is a nice little treat. I spent like, you know, 10, 15, let's say 15 bucks on a, a movie ticket. And then I spent like another 15 bucks on uh, a meal and a drink. And I spent like 30, 30, 30 or 40 bucks. But like, you know what? It's like a nice experience. And like I spent 40 bucks and my fucking wife spent 40 bucks. But it's like, it's not too bad now. But instead you go and you get a fucking large drink and a large popcorn. That's $20. And that's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I go to 7-Eleven. You know, I, you have to get the, you have to get the popcorn there. Because it's good popcorn, but that's why I go to Seven Eleven beforehand. Because like, what do you think I'm gonna like, spend that much money on this shit? It's ridiculous. Do you like how much I like at the Annapolis Mall? I like malls in general. I'm a mall whore. Okay, I like like little destinations. I like going places with my wife, and we like going to malls. It's like silly little vacations. We get to go there. We get to shop. They're somewhat familiar. I like stuff like that. We enjoy our time together. Yeah, I was just wondering that because I saw Roadhouse is coming out, and it looked like a Prime movie, but they're saying it screens so good yeah. that they might save it for theater. So the model is like pretty much because we're all on our phone, and eventually our phone is going to be on our eyes, like you already said. Yeah, and eventually it's going to be in the back of our head. One hundred percent. Yeah, well, I felt like the Neuralink thing. That's going to be like the next scary thing in the next generation. You know, they do say that the uh, that uh, the the you know one of our uh, potential utopias is all being hooked up to some kind of a computer that's going to like make us immortal and we're going to be able to have like human experiences of them so maybe that's where we're going it's 100 <laughs> percent. so it's all fucking just upload our brains to the, to the microsoft get your money make your name but like yeah. i just went to this con this week. go to tyson's gallery what is that you can you know these worlds the con worlds? Yeah, 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 yeah they're incredible it's insane they're huge dude and i look at myself as a fucking human piece of sculpture yeah uh, people oh, is this a mall and what is va do how stupid am i um i'll send this to my wife Oh, that's cool. Is that Virginia? Right? VA is Virginia? <sighs> yes, Virginia. How fucking far is that? Maybe I will. Maybe I'll take like a train or something. People we'll want to come more and more now because they know. see me. Because AI will come. Because yeah. robots will come. Because avatars will come. Because... Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm coming. Let me tell you that. You know, that artist. Uh, I want to say she's Brazilian. Maybe not. She's marrying an a her avatar. She's marrying an AI boyfriend. Oh, I, I don't know. It's, it's a big story. Should should I'm marrying my replica. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, she's marrying her... <laughs> A, a virtual man. Uh huh. And, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but she's an artist. <laughs> we as men have failed so much. Is, is her, is she trying to like do some kind of like artistic piece to marry? Them? I mean, I, I feel like we are getting to the place where they're going to be able to simulate an entire person, pheromones and all, and all that are going. It's going to be an interesting time. That's where you get into the, the scary part of like, you know, once you are able to basically make a human being with a particular response and, and, and simulate emotions and hormones and pheromones and this and that, you know, are, are those people? <laughs> you know what I mean? Are we going to consider those? Like, what is what is a person? We're going to have the, the new philosophical. It's not going to be trans people anymore. The new philosophical debate is going to be like fucking artificial technology. It's going to be like, what the fuck is this? You know, she went out and found a dude. She's gonna get <laughs> she can nag him for hours. <laughs> She's gonna get pixelated. <laughs> Pixel. She's gonna get pixelated. <laughs> so she fucking. Anyway, that's real. She is an artist. I want to say she's from South America, but maybe not. And so, anyway, 
I believe, like Justine Bateman said, that they're gonna when you make these content, you're gonna say this is real, 100% fresh, organic, human made content. And there's gonna be a there's gonna be a, a skew for that. Like, yeah, I wonder how much of a demand for that there would be. I would imagine there would be a decent demand. Like, there's still gonna be that human factor that's gonna be valued, at least in the current generations that are like, yeah, I want to see like a real person doing a thing. You know, it's Walmart, the world Walmart, and there's gonna be different skews, and that's what you're talking about now. So yeah, it's a. I honestly like listen. This is silly. I don't know if this is silly. I can't wait for them to invent. Um, Amazon shopping in VR, where you get to go to a place. There, are, there is like legit technology, my understanding, where you can feel things even in VR. So you can go to like an Amazon store or go to a store online, and you can see the size of a thing, even if it's not perfect touch. But you can see like the size of like a couch or a dishwasher, and you can kind of go around and look at it and be like, "Oh, I like this." And you can go to like a virtual Toys R Us, or you can go to a virtual this, and you can look at something and be like, "Oh, I like this a lot. I'm gonna buy this." Like that would be so much better of an experience. I mean, it's another step to people not leaving their house but it would be so cool especially if you can get that tactile feature where there's some kind of glove or something there you can touch something and you can get like a general feeling um that would be excellent that would be so cool like imagine just putting it on going like virtual shopping the only <clears throat> and then if you take it a step further i mean maybe they can make one that's not just a glove for your hands you know what i'm saying and you could feel other sensations but that's just me that's i'm just talking Okay. Beautiful thing. But was it nice to see the times of Cary Grant and the star system and riding on the fucking convertible with yeah. Darth Day? And it was like, yeah, I still love that shit. It was great. I mean, it, it was definitely something I got the tail end of. Yeah. But it was cool to see just because of all the pa the pageantry around it. It yeah. felt like they made it feel like a, a level of like, a, 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 I mean, aristocracy. Right. But so, the bullshit now is good that it's being because there's a lot of bullshit with it, a lot of dirtiness, yeah. so it's being exposed, and people are like, Fuck "American, it. yeah, the I American Dream Wall, my... New Jersey." We were supposed to go there for my birthday, but we went to the Annapolis Mall in January. And I was like, "Let's save some money. Like, let's save some money. Let's not go right now." Um, that's what I had told my wife. So that's what we did. Because it was supposed to be, fun, but I, I don't care about my. I really don't particularly care for my birthday. It's just not. I was like, okay, you know, my own thing. It, it's uh, it, it's kind of brought all that down to just the human level. Yes, you know? dude, you're so right. The, but the thing is, is the only gripe I have because I'm with you on everything is the delusion of delusionals. Yeah, but it, honestly, I gotta be honest. With you. Some of these delusionals blow up, and it's just worse. It's kind of funny sometimes to just watch somebody who's insanely delusional go on their journey and then slowly find out just how much how delusional they are because reality hits everybody across the face at some point. But dude, some of these people yeah. do not get corrected. They are very successful. At, at some point, sometimes it takes a while. It hits everybody, but you can't escape reality. So it does hit. You're saying, yeah. I mean, and I've watched you. You, you're a community. You're a part of the YouTube community, right? Like people yeah. know you. Yeah, love you. Don't. Uh, I guess so. Yeah, like you. Yeah, respect you. Get mad at you. Like you. Listen, I don't mean to be rude. Are there people who respect this guy left or you are yeah. a voice in that community? Yeah, I'm definitely not as influential in that community as I used to be, but. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's not even a bad thing necessarily, though. Like, I'm pretty happy with, like, flying solo. Like, I know that there's people who know of me in different communities and stuff, and they talk about, like, a little... Not, like, talk about me, really. Like, they'll be like, what do you think of Papa God? Oh, like, he seems fine. Like, but I'm kind of happy about that. I like that, uh, chilling myself. You know, there's... I'm 50% move speed. Oh. Anyway, sorry. I was confused for a second. Um, that's definitely a way to go is like you know to get influences to obviously talk to different people which is not a bad idea but like i prefer my uh brand awareness to be more through tiktok than necessarily communicating with people i kind of like i kind of enjoy my independence i enjoy talking to people sometimes but i really enjoy my independence so i think i like i value it a lot i don't think you necessarily need a big community of other creators to interact with why would you say that uh because my my viewership has gone down a lot now, how did that happen? <laughs> uh, I think it was partly when I was like swapping out of irrelevant news okay. to like just doing my own thing. Yes. Yeah. And I uh, honestly, like, he's not going to say what, what happened with me. He shouldn't. Like, <laughs> you think I'd be like, oh, that's not true. Like, he's not going to bring it up. He shouldn't bring it up. Like, he should let that part of the past die. Like, honestly, like, it doesn't matter. Like, don't even bring it up. Don't just let it. Yeah, you know what? I did a shift and like, I had some rough uh, patch going on. That's it. You don't need to specifically talk about everything. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of told <laughs> a lot of the people to just fuck off. A lot of the people who were like on my ass at the time, like, oh, we don't like what you're saying. Or that. I said, you know what? If you don't like it, fuck you. Don't watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's not actually what happened. You just, that's just like a new thing where he told people. <laughs> it's like a new thing where he's telling people, if you don't like me, then don't watch me. Um, I think he was like begging to get people to unsubscribe as like a way to try to bring back relevancy. But again, he shouldn't tell the truth or be specific because it also doesn't matter to like somebody who's not fucking terminally online, like who really gives a shit, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I had a certain audience that at the time. Uh, they took that very personally. And uh, some that had nothing to do with it. But people okay. got very offended by it. And honestly, I understand. Uh, it's just like, I, it, I, you can't like, 
I would much rather be my authentic self. It's a beautiful thing. And give you that than to. Wow, do you think he watches me too? He keeps saying a beautiful thing. I always say it's a beautiful thing because it is certainly a beautiful thing. Maybe he sees my TikToks because yeah, so some of those actually get views. Just like jerk you off and pretend like everything's all right. Whoa. So now, yeah, because I watched me. that video. You transitioned, if I can say that. Yeah. You transitioned from the cat to the human. Yeah. And you talked about that. You were like, it's a lot of work. It hurts my voice. Yeah. It's not exactly well, anything I, I want to do. That was when I killed the cat. You killed the cat. Uh, I literally <laughs> shot him. Yeah. But there was another. There was another. Not a real cat. Not a real. No, no. It was a, the fictional cat I played. Yeah. There was uh, there was another moment when I started the club and like uh, it was there was a lot of like conversation in my own community and because I'm a part of different communities on YouTube as well, there's a lot of intersection. But there was a lot of conversation about what I was doing as far as my content, right, and where I was going. And I was I was really um, I, I honestly if I, I think if I had done it like in a smoother way, the, the outcome would have been very different. But I just ripped off the band aid. That's just the kind of person that I am. I just like rip it off and I, I just do it. Right? Very charitable reframing of his past. But like I said. He, you know, he shouldn't tell the truth. <laughs> There's no reason to breathe life into it. You know what I mean? Right. But, but you're building up funny. again. I'm building it up, and I think I'm building it. I don't know if that's true. I feel I don't think that's true. But good. hopefully, maybe he is. Maybe he's just transitioning, and he's building up in, like, real life. Maybe his comedy club is doing better, and, like, YouTube is just something he's of the past for him. Who knows? Get up on, like. But I mean, I feel like if that was true, why are you posting so much like on your YouTube? It's like bizarre, you know, especially in, like the weird way you are in a more like in a way, in a style that's more authentic to me, you know, and right. more of who I am and how I see things and the kind of uh, things that I would like to leave to the world and influence the world with, which is like uh, I, I would like, you know, if possible if ever on the Internet for people to just have a, a little bit more like uh, empathy. Right. I <laughs> OK. Interesting. I would love it if, if people like uh, slowed down a little bit and didn't rush the judgment with everything. Mm, uh, I, I would sure. love it if, if there's a little irony there because you kind of did the same thing with other people. That's kind of why like you got consumed by your audience. But like, yeah, I generally agree with that. I, I think people need to slow the fuck down. I'm going to die again. I'm going to get so pissed. Oh, <sighs> we had a little bit more of a sense. Do I think Dennis is my number one hate watcher? No, I don't think he watches me at all. Why would he like that would be a waste of time for him to even like look at my content. I was talking about Jamie Kennedy. Let's make it a joke. Of like, because I went to the same fucking comedy school as Vince Vaughn. Uh, of just understanding that people like Recon aren't necessarily scout. malicious all the time. Sometimes yeah, they're just dumb, and it comes out bad. Mm. Sure, I mean I call it well-intentioned hysteria, um, where, yeah, right. Mm. So, or I specifically talk about well-intentioned hysteria in relationship to people who like are incredibly sensational, or they like freak out over something that's not as big of a deal, but they mean well. Um, like the same thing with that whole situation with uh, George is not found. Like well-intentioned hysteria. These people mean well, but they're just fucking wrong and dumb, and they need to like chill the fuck out. You know? Oh, obviously, there's there's a line with that one, right? And I think common sense can easily discern what is what, right? I think you, you, most reasonable people will know what's bad and good, mm -hmm. right? But I think a lot of the times there's there's so many situations on the internet that uh, you know people get destroyed over fucking jokes, right? They get destroyed over uh, like harmless things. That don't really justify the level of reaction that they're getting, the level of negativity. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's talking about me. So I, I, I was a big part of like being, you know, in those like conversations and fueling the fire in one direction, right? In, in like stoking up those flames with a lot of like inflammatory sure. coverage of, of things, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, at one point I was like, like, what am I doing? Like it just felt like, in, it felt unhuman. You I was again, like I don't think. I mean, that's probably a revelation he came through after the fact, but like you didn't shift your content because of that. Let's just be clear. I doubt that there wasn't like not like a motivation for him, you know. But that's something that he probably learned after the fact, which is a good thing to learn. I like feel like I've learned a similar thing. I feel like I've slowed down and relaxed a little bit. Um, I stopped caring. Like, you know, I never tried to appeal to an audience. But like I said, like it could be like almost unintentional. Um, so like, yeah, sure. You felt like you were helping people have the demise that they didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I didn't want to do that anymore. And, mm -hmm. and like, I do. No, I'm just kidding. I don't think it's about covering topics. I think it's like the way that you cover a topic that could have that impact of like, uh, you know, trashing somebody. <laughs> Uh, or something. And, and you know that ended up. I think that honestly, uh, it's like I, I thought about this in many different ways, and I, I think that what it comes down to, and it's like a karmic circle, and kind of like what I took part of, I had to learn through having it done to me, mm -hmm. so that or having experiencing it myself, so that I could actually come out the other side and actually ha like understand what principles that I do actually want to, uh, uh, you know, this is cold damage. Make my work about. I'm gonna fart. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean that's a very very evolved thought. That's yeah, good. Let's do this. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I just died. Uh, yeah. Fuck. What? A lot, I feel like a lot of YouTubers have a lot of success. Am I wrong? And then I think they start losing it. Yeah. Everybody crashes and burns. Like it, there's usually for different reasons. It really depends on like, the individual. I think a lot of cases people, uh, one of the most important things you need to learn as a content creator is like your, your curve, your up and down curve. Um,
<laughs> how many people in your you guys say incredible stuff in your in your off time now that's funny uh i think that a lot of people have to learn their curve so when they have like a like they start doing a little bit worse they freak out instead of going like oh there's just factors i can't control like it's good to make sure you don't become irrelevant but sometimes you're just going to have like an up and down it's like cyclical and you really just need to understand that or else you're going to spiral you're gonna be like oh why I, I haven't had a one out of ten in such a long time i must be doing part no it depends on like a bunch of different uh, aspects as to why something like that could happen. I mean, maybe depending on your content, there's nothing hot right now. Maybe there's not as many people consuming your type of content, or you know, you just gotta try try to stay consistent. Especially, you know, especially with some people because there might also be bursts, like wa- watch bursts. You know, you might have like a bad month, and then a month later, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, I have like an excellent month. Like, what's happening? People are what? Maybe they're watching your ba- your old content, your backlog content. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, not the, you. The but... usual the usual arc for most people on the internet period yeah. is about two years, and then what happens? And then you just fall off. Wow, I've been doing pretty well. Then if it's only two years, it's fucking incredible. Let's do this. And it's just people like the. There used to be. It's like a almost like a formula, right? Like I, they I, fall off or their mind falls off. No, nah, it's like the uh, the attention span of the internet. Like people just. Um, it's a little bit of both. It depends. I mean, it also depends on what they got popular for. If you were just, if you are kind of just a person that does things that anybody could do, you know, like for instance, like you know, you're Charlie D'Amelio's. No offense to her, but. Um, that's replaceable. I think that if you're somebody that has like a particular skill that you could provide, like even if you think my commentary sucks, like I feel like I'm at least intelligent enough for you guys to sit down and like listen to me like long term. I mean, people watch me for like I like ten thousand. I think my average viewers are best. It's like maybe it is like eight to ten thousand views for video, and that's usually like a two hour plus long video. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, that's after like its peak. Like I feel like it's um harder. Not hard. It's not hard to do commentary, but like it's harder. Or if you do something like that, where like you have a little bit of a niche skill, that's, I mean, I guess it's still replaceable. I think you guys are understanding what I'm saying. Or maybe I'm not talking about like Charlie D'Amelio. More like like those fucking prank YouTubers that just go around and like fart on people. Like there's really nothing there. You know, anybody can kind of overtake you. Um, maybe I'm just rambling right now. I don't know if I'm tired or not, but I think <laughs> hopefully you guys understand the general sentiment that I'm saying. Um. But yeah, if you don't have like a, if you're, if you know what I'm trying to say? If you're somebody who is provocative for attention, for like quick, easy views, like Pearl Davis, that's the people that are going to go through like these, these fall off periods um, because they're just doing things for like attention, not necessarily productive attention. Those are the people that are going to see the biggest issue. I think that back in the day, that was a very prevalent thing to do is to just engage in unproductive attention because like, oh, well, any attention is good attention, which is not the case. It's really not true. So just the, after two years on average, like if you're a social media personality and you're still maintaining the level of engagement in your community and relevance, you know, in the conversation after two years, you're pretty much like, like outliving what most influencers get and, and experience. Right. Um, and I, I kind of put it at the two year mark because it's something I've observed. And also I, I one of my oh, first jobs uh, when I moved to New York was I, I used to uh, go on ass. tour with like rappers. Right. Uh, this guy's had a really eventful life. Yeah. What's this guy talking about? What was he doing? It, it was fun, dude. Okay. I, uh, you know, currency. No, I, no, he's a rapper from New Orleans. Okay, uh, I went on tour with him to like Canada and uh, stuff, and then the Northeast, like Vermont. Uh, but I was working for uh, Dame Dash, mm-hmm. who's like the one of the owners of former business partner Jay Z, yeah, Rockefeller, and uh, and I, he- <laughs> okay, yeah, that kind of that kind of like uh, that kind of uh, makes me feel like I was correct about like the old job his dad had, or his job his dad had was like in some kind of media because there's no way that he got that job through like qualification. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> like your fucking dad got you that job. He. Is somebody who's very knowledgeable of the business and he would talk about stuff and one of the things he would mention is that uh, uh you know yeah, sure. every personality or star there's a five year like you know once you reach that household name or public figure status there's a five year period for you to exploit that image and then you either have to switch up your image after five years or the public interest saturates so much that it, people just stop caring about you right maybe and that's pretty much really true and, yeah and that's pretty much what it, you know why i, I just think on the internet's a little faster it's like the two-year thing um you know, it's it's rare to see. I, mean, I think the internet gives you an opportunity to like almost if you if you uh, will say retire well. Well, I said that's true. Like you get like two really good years, and then you're kind of like irrelevant. If you do a good job at like your sustaining retirement, then you like have no problem. Like I don't really think you have a huge issue. You don't have to maintain the the level of viewership that you used to have to still be successful. But I don't know how much I agree with that. I mean, I don't know. In general, I think I still have like a, a lot of good years left. I mean, I'm basically doing like podcast stuff, so I think I have like a, a bit of decent shit left. Influencers that like maybe I'm just go past the two years with the same level. But you gotta keep your confidence, baby. Well, fame they had before. I mean, yeah, but if you're doing something good, I think you can keep going. Yeah, I mean, there are people who do good stuff and still like good entertaining content. And yeah. So you know, I think it's a marathon, not a race. I agree, but I do think that because people blow up so yeah. quickly, they don't know what the fuck they did. 
that's absolutely true. That's a big thing. Like you'll blow up and they don't even necessarily know how it happened and they have no, they're not attuned. Fuck, I'm going the wrong way. They're not attuned with like what made them successful. So they like burn out because they don't really get it. I think especially for a lot of young kids during COVID who had that issue, like they exploded and blew up so fast. And so now that COVID's over, like they don't understand why they're not getting the same views anymore, even though it's like there's people aren't home watching anymore. Like that's really the fucking primary reason there. Um, I'm going to die right here. It's actually going to suck balls. I think most people, especially with the way that uh, the internet and like TikTok yeah. set everybody up. It's like everybody is constantly chasing that viral moment. I know. And that, that's, that goes into like what you were just saying of like just the short term, right? And that's why you end up having these cycles of two years. Yeah. Right? Dude, I love you, but the camera's gonna die. We've All already right. done almost an hour and a half. Can you believe that? That was fucking camera's gonna die? <laughs> Fast. I know. Fast, dude. I could talk to you for a while, dude. You yeah. have really interesting takes on things. Oh, thanks, bro. You, you, you know, I, I have grown up watching your work. I've said this before when you went on my podcast. I still watch you. Uh, Oh, what, do they, they go on this podcast? That's cool. I guess that's pretty... I didn't, I didn't even really... What is Death Doodle's podcast? Uh, I don't even know. Okay. I, you're, uh, I don't want your cameras to die, but I just wanted to... Yeah. Uh, you, you were like one of my inspirations with a lot of different things that I've done in my life. So it, it's like, uh, it's always surreal seeing you and meeting you and like knowing that I got you on my phone and we can text and stuff. So I'm really appreciative that you had me here. It's like, uh, it's really... Oh, that's cute. All right, good for them. You dope. That means a lot, bro. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. You're doing great work, man. Keep doing what you're doing. And I'm going to come. I'm going to do a show. What day do we figure out? Oh, here. Uh, it's, well, well, I'll put it up. I'm going to yeah, do yeah. it. Listen, maybe this is the bump that uh, Dennis needs, man. Maybe this is his, uh, his shot. Good for him. I literally don't care if he succeeds or not, but good for him, man. Uh, good for you, bro. Do it up. You know, do it up. Stop posting fucking random idiot shit posts on TikTok or uh, YouTube, though. And like, fuck, start being productive with your your platform and maybe you'll you know be able to take advantage of the pop i'm gonna fuck with that like right here oh hey, show do you want to tell people your socials or you're good uh just deaf noodles go to deaf noodles you'll find them everywhere yeah i appreciate those kind of words bro thank you appreciate you too thank you guys like subscribe all right okay uh interesting video i'm kind of people told me they wanted me to watch this like the truth so i'm gonna watch this real quick so we got a very sweet comment in my last video god will bring you back up give it a chance at least it's from tyler pruitt 3804 god will bring you back up give it a chance at least and that is a, a very true message. God will bring you back up. However, I don't think that applies to me in the sense that I'm not saying this out of uh, arrogance or I'm saying this in the humblest way possible because I've actually been very blessed as all of this happened, right? And we're talking about, you know, the, the fall off, I guess. I've been very blessed in the sense that while my social media presence has largely gone away, right? Like 99% of it is completely gone. I've been so unbelievably blessed in other areas of my life, I have met so many wonderful people. Uh, I, I Okay. I mean, I guess I, I feel the same way, man. I always talk about how I'm blessed. I'm getting a little like, is this motherfucker watching me? Is he copying me, dude? Like, that's what I've been talking about. I truly am blessed. I've been feeling so good lately. I've married the woman of my love. The love of my life. The woman of my dreams, what I meant to say. I have, like, my better family connections. I had a nice night tonight with my family. I know this sounds so cringe, but, like, you know, before... Uh, when I was with my ex, like we were very isolated, you know, she would always have us leave my family party sooner and it was just always sucked. So I wasn't able to like really build, but like with my wife, it's been like a very positive, incredible experience. So I've been like hanging out my, with my family more and they like her a lot, which is very helpful. My family loves my wife. That's incredible stuff. They uh, did not like others, but, um, you know, uh, so I don't know. It's like weird. Like maybe we're just going through the same thing. Maybe we're both having the same experience. Uh, cool stuff. I live in a situation that's always been a dream for me, and I, I get to do what I love every single day. Uh, and I don't know. I All just right, feel so stuff, so blessed. I don't, I don't know how I can wake up and think that anything has actually been taken away from me. Sure, yeah, I'm not getting hundreds of thousands of views as I used to uh, on YouTube, but I can't think of a time in my life where I was just more unhappy than when uh... I had it. I was just. I mean, that's fair. I've had my wife and I again. We've talked about like quitting YouTube because I was so miserable at a certain point. So, like, yeah, I get that. So profoundly unhappy, and obviously, <laughs> yeah, quit. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> again, that's been taken away. God took that away from me, or whoever took that away from me. Uh, I don't want to blame God. Maybe Bingle. God on that, because you know those Holding were my decisions. Missiles, right? I made the decisions that led me to this point, but it all happened in a way. That gave me so much more, right? I, I live in this beautiful house with a huge backyard. We I have five dogs. I, uh, for I, I, five? Did he say five dogs? 
I, I live in this beautiful house with a huge backyard. I have five dogs. There's no way that this guy can afford his lifestyle without like his fucking dad's money. This is insane. This guy's <laughs> what the fuck? This guy's the Michael Quinn of YouTube. I um, I, I have a beautiful girlfriend who loves and supports me. I, I haven't been as close to my family as uh, as I've ever been as I am now. I don't know, dude. Okay, listen, it's getting creepy now. It's getting a little bit creepy. It's getting creepy. I'm not lying. Like, I really am not trying to feel this way. It's getting very creepy. I feel like this motherfucker is watching me, and he's just saying what I'm saying. You think he has five, like, dogs? You think he's got, like, five of his homies, you know what I'm saying? He did hire a lot of black people back in the day. But my thing, like, <laughs> is it just me? I mean, this guy's like fucking saying what I've been saying for like like a while now. Like, <laughs> like I said it here too, but I constantly say this in my content. Is this motherfucker unironically watching me? And like, just fucking, is he is he stealing me? Is he stealing my fucking personality, bro? I don't know. Um, it, it, you know, I, I have a community of people who are just the best maybe i'm just being a fucking a conspiracy theorist probably honestly and i get to go up at my own uh, you know little comedy venue or maybe he does watch me and he just took inspiration and he's like wow i'm really learning the positivity of being a papa gut fan it's incredible stuff and work on something i'm very passionate about obviously i'm not I'm very blessed uh, i'm still you know learning and improving every day and, and working on i things. woke up in a uh, new but it's still, uh, a passion of mine and uh, i'm very humbly Humbly, pursuing all this humbly knowing humbly. just all of my short kill him kill him that that's that this guy oh. right? uh, so that's why i say that got him uh yeah i don't think there's anything to bring me back we up to because it, it all happened for, for a so it, much it, more it, it, the chips fell into and place we lost our fell into oh place that's not good did for a specific reason so i could be in this position right sure um god bless brother so yeah i'm just very blessed i always thank god thank god for everything um i wouldn't be here without god Everything I have in my beautiful life. Beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful stuff. Um, beautiful thanks st to him. Beautiful cum. Uh, that being said, in reference to this, what you're the saying, shotgun God pierce. will bring you back up. You know, in reference to my. You know, raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. Sorry. I don't want to any of the videos on this channel why why wouldn't you monetize them them silly goosery on the other channels I, I make barely enough where any reasonable person will be able to live off of I do this as a hobby and, you know and I dedicate no more than one or two hours a day on all this stuff okay. uh, because it's a hobby and what's the hobby again the YouTube part <laughs> do you really like YouTube that much that you do it as a hobby I don't know if I believe that but and honestly it being like this again has also kind of reinvigorated uh, you okay. know, so many ideas of things that I want to explore. Because, you know, like I said, at one point, I was having success, but I was so unhappy. And I, and I felt like I was trapped uh, in sure. jail. And so it was not fun. And now it's fun again. That's so cool. I can respect yeah. that. I'm very thankful. To wow, maybe it sounds like Dennis has a much better relationship with his content. It's beautiful stuff, man. God, God always comes first. And though God, I filter, I would, God sounds like a selfish guy if he's coming first, dude. That's crazy. We'll always look up to him for guidance. And as I always say in my prayers, I always say this, folks. Is this guy really religious? <laughs> well, the only reason I'm asking, the only reason it sounds weird is because earlier he said uh, he said something like, oh, God, or whatever it might be. Like he alluded to that it might not be God. And it's like, if you are, the way that you sound is like super religious. I don't know why you'd say that. It sounds <laughs> like, is this really your opinion? I don't know. This guy's a little weird. It's one thing I always say, and I always ask God, I say, show me the door and I will walk through it. Tell me what to say. And I will say it. I don't know if I believe any of what you're saying, but okay. And though I may falter, I will do my best. To do my duty, to God and my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Amen. I still remember. I remember my oaths. To honor you and all the blessings you've given me. And he has <laughs> I saw Dennis referring an Amazon package the other day. I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, really? Did you? That's funny. Bless me so much. Um, and I hope that I can continue sharing all the blessings he has given me with all the people I have in my life. Anyway, folks, uh, I, I like to talk about my faith because it's very important to me. All right, okay. And maybe, I think maybe that I'm wrong. Uh, I, don't know. It's been I just got the feeling that he didn't, but hey, fuck me, right? Stigmatized for too long. You know, what? It, it, not being able to talk about your faith. Like, it, it, what are you talking about? Why can't you talk about your faith? It, I, Is this his red pill resurgence, dude? What the hell's happening?
Because I did guess that he's going to turn red pill at some point. Is this part of it? Because you see like a lot of content creators grifting. It's like, oh, I'm very religious, but they're not like Sneeko. Your Sneekos, your, your Andrew Tates, et cetera, et cetera. But... I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be alive if it weren't for God. Incredible stuff. Um, my life completely changed the moment. Neither would Jesus, because God fucked his mom. And I opened my heart up to him. So fucking my mommy. You, you think that Mary was fucking hot, though? Like from the Bible? Because if I was God, I would, try to, I would be trying to tap some A1... I'd be trying to tap some A1, like a human. I'm not trying to go out there and mess around with some ugly girl. I would be like, oh man, that one's hot. And then it gets weird because it's like, that's your kid, isn't it? Like, didn't you make all of them? So like, you're just kind of, that's like your kid that you're, you're going after. So it's kind of weird when you think of it like that. Um, also though, if I was God, you know, and I'm a man and I was like, oh, I got to create people. Like, what if God created people and he's like, oh, let's create evolution. I'm going to create people and I'm going to create evolution. And then, like, I'm hoping that there's going to be some magical mix of evolutionary genes that will make the hottest girl ever. Like, maybe we're just God's science experiments so we can kind of occasionally have sex with girls. Because I would do that. And didn't, uh, didn't, like, Zeus do that? I don't know. I mean, I feel like maybe they're the same guy. Didn't Zeus turn into, like, equals and fuck girls or something? What if what if what if Zeus is like turning into dogs and then that's where you hear all these weird dog people that really like dogs a lot? Cuz like Zeus is like, "Oh yeah, and he's a real charmer." I think about these things sometimes. It's just an interesting thought that I had. Every single one of you and may he always bless all of you. Um, holy, holy, right. holy Lord. Wow. That was, Hi. Shut up. That was cool, I guess. Uh, interesting stuff.